setting all my doubts on fire Ooh, like it won't believe it Won't let a moment pass me by
crush back then in the neighborhood.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ESL Challenge Young Shipping Closed Qualifier, where today we're going to be uh, watching Apex take on Monty to see what they can do. Uh, we've only got one spot to give out. We're getting close to the end. We're here in the lower bracket. It's elimination on the line. I'm Darth Mike. This is Alan Hender. Uh, what do you think we're going to get here, Alan? A spicy game. Lots of fun storylines, I guess. We saw a little bit, of course, of Monty yesterday, especially in their first game up against NIP. Um, work in progress. Is that a fair assessment of where Monty's at at the moment? Obviously, losing SDY, bro. Now over to Astralis. These are some big changes, change of leadership. Young players brought in. And as, as skilled as they look, you, you still have to imagine there's, there's some work to be done. So Monty's a work in progress, whereas obviously Apex here is the known quantity. They'll be disappointed they're even in this lower bracket. So... Yeah, I think it looks good for Apex, but there's certainly a lot of fun storylines we're going to have playing out today. There are, there are. And Monty's such a fresh roster as well that you've yeah. got to imagine that there's always the possibility that you're genuinely improving day-to-day, match-to-match. Um, you're still in that point of the life cycle here. Um, but yeah, Apex, a lot more put together. A team that, you know, made it to the major, that that has had a um, pretty strong run of form recently. Um, kind of interesting to wonder for Apex. I... I don't know if there's been a statement on this yet. I haven't seen one. Uh, but to my knowledge, Stiko was originally just signed through the major. So I don't know whether he's going to stick around, whether uh, they're going to go any different direction, or what, what the uh, approach is going to be there for Apex. But we could be watching one of Apex's last events with Stiko. Yeah, I mean, that would be a, a great shame because he has been with them throughout, obviously, their highest highs, including Paris last year. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think for Apex... I mean, they made the major, they've got buying power, they've got cachet, they've got that kind of that aura around them, I guess, now of having been a consistent top 25, top 20 team for over a year. So they should be in a position to make good changes. But yeah, I think in the here and now, they are still a solid five-man lineup that played together for quite a long time now. So I don't expect them to be a team in flux in the same way that Monty will be and has already borne out to be. So yeah, I think going into this matchup, Apex should be the much more fundamentally sound team just based off their chemistry together. Mm. I mean, for the big question for Apex has just been since developing as a caller, as an IGL. Um, he's still so young into the role and so young into this roster that they've they've uh, certainly been growing uh, into it. We've got the veto. Let's talk about the veto. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Apex going to ban Nuke. Monty will ban Inferno. Apex pick Ancient. Monty pick Mirage. And Anubis is our decider i don't think there's anything too surprising here apex like a bit of ancient uh hate a bit of mirage monty love a bit of mirage I haven't had the greatest time on ancient uh this kind of makes sense yeah i don't think any huge surprises i'm just going back for it to make sure it I think checks out yeah i mean anubis is a decider is probably a decent break for apex <laughs> considering the ways it could have gone yeah i think i guess the the only question is veto is why is monty scared of verdict of um of overpass or maybe equally is there anubis undersold at the moment because we do know it has historic, historic, historically been a really good map for them um mm. they have been battered actually in the last three games haven't they um but they've only played it once with this lineup they lost to nip yesterday i don't know there's just not enough data i guess to assess them on anubis but they've, they've historically been so good on the map that i tend to lean towards the direction of their stats at the moment are underselling them so I think, I think both teams are fairly happy with where this is going. Yeah, yeah, I think they would be. Um, the overpass is an interesting question because it is deflated right now in terms of win statistics for Apex. But I, I do think of it as being a good map for them historically, right? Nock and, and Jacob can certainly be uh, some firepower pieces on that map. Um, let's take a look at the bracket, see where we're at. See where we're at in the, in the qualifier here. Uh, because this is our first game of the day here in the lower bracket quarterfinals. And then we'll be hopping over to watch Aurora take on NIP for a spot in the grand final there. That's um, that's going to be a spicy one. This NIP roster is impressing us early with their new addition of Wrinkle. That dude, uh, he can shoot. Yeah, and he's going to play Deco. So two players, similar regions. Should be uh, should be fun to see who can come out on top there. But yeah, um, the bracket's really starting to shape up if we get maybe apex met metasport in the lower bracket game they've got some seriously good four teams to come and for those watching over today aurora nip will be the matchup are here on a stream i think it's 6 30 uk so 7 30 uh, central europe whatever that is in, in philadelphia 1 2 p.m 
if you're a, a fellow statesman like yourself something like that something like that i think uh 130 is what we're shooting for um yeah you know a little time travel a little time zone shenanigans uh but uh, I'm I'm very fascinated to see that. I, I think uh, you know Wrinkle put on a show for us yesterday. Uh, I think Aurora has also you know added in a new player in Result, who we've rated very highly in his time on Forza. Um, potential gearing up for both squads. It's an interesting one, and the question for NIP also remains: you know, uh, Blue Phoenix, his audition for the spot. Is he going to stick around? Is he going to show enough to stick into that spot, or is a change coming in? Yeah, I think. Um... Well, we'll get on to this later, I guess, a little bit more. But I think for NIP, they've, you know, we said it yesterday on the broadcast, the fact that we're sat there asking so many questions, they're asking even more internally about who's playing where, what's, where's the lineup going, have we made the right decisions, what does the leadership balance look like, change of coach. So, again, we'll bear that out later today and over the rest of the qualifier. But, um, yeah, some, uh, I don't know, a lot of spice. It's always the same, isn't it, post-major, post all the changes. It's always a lot yeah. going on, a lot to figure out. And we like to jump to uh, fast and, uh, you know, hot hot take conclusions. We love a bit of that. Yeah, it got to be done. I mean, this is the silly season, right? Yeah. Uh, that's why I can't wait for the major to actually be at the end of the seasons so that we can do our silly season in the off season. Makes sense. It makes so much more sense, folks. And we're going to do it starting next year. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. It only took Valve like 15 years of majors to figure out that this was a good idea. 10 years. Uh, I'll give them more credit. It was like a decade before they figured out that this made the most sense. Uh, but you know what's going to make sense for us right now, Alan? Is taking a quick little break mm. before we get into this game. We'll be right back.
off high above We go off in the night We leave in the red Live into the action, Monty and Apex start their campaign on Ancient. Both these teams now in the lower bracket. It's elimination on the line. Who's going to survive? These are two teams that are well familiar with each other. Though, uh, new look on the Monty side with Disney and Ryu in the fold. They impressed yesterday. See if they could do so again today. Ryu this is down. so awkward. They can't move. They can't get out. And I don't blame them for cancelling. It would have just been a suicide mission, wouldn't it? But it looks like Apex are just pumping the brakes. Put some doubts into Monty's minds. And maybe they could get a catch here. He's going to get aggressive. Oh, of course he doesn't miss, does he? <laughs> for those that no. missed Rio yesterday. Um, he likes a headshot. Let's put it that way. Mm. Mechanical talent is the way to describe it. Just don't miss. Some insane flicks. Some 180 shots. Ooh. He's that getting comms? caught off guard. Mistake? That's that a comms weird. mistake. 100%. That's the player. Uh, I think it was Gizmi who was supposed to be holding him. Uh, he was trying to switch over towards Long as Wara was coming up and Ryu had no idea he was exposed. Bomb plant off of it. Sasanito, can you bring this through? That would be tremendous. It's the cave player who's the threat. Demka coming through, but the footsteps on. Oh, this is getting close. Seven bullets in. It's got to be the headshots down. It's just the one. Oh, he's out of shots, but the last one will land. Last bullet in the magazine, Alan. Sassanito, four in the round. How the hell's he won that? Oh, that was beautiful. The kill on the Demka was pivotal. Oh. That is a huge blow for Monty. 2v4 win for Apex. And as we said, it all started with a, a slightest lapse of communication. Hmm. That's going to sting. It's going to sting a lot. Better Monty you can muster just a force by now. And they need to uh, resettle their heads. Get ourselves into this round. Warrior's got the scout in hand. Mid is very open. Just gives me playing very passive. Jiggling from donuts. Jacob can force him back off that donut jiggle. Monty will have to reroute. And there you go. Exactly that happens. B left exposed as Monty have to pick up mid. The defense is finned. Damage exchange. Scout tag. Or does it come away unblemished? Some new holes being created in Krasnall's home. Oh, 
Simka uh, uh, just walks out. Just walks out. The A main push works out beautifully. And now Krasno is collected on the first in towards cave. Bomb's going to be planted again. But surely they can't turn another round of this. Magnitude of this advantage back around. They did it once before. But that was in the pistol. A little bit of a ball game here. On the fade, it's a bit of an exchange. And now Nock is left to do all the work himself at Nock. Making it happen, making it possible. Panic spray on the last. And no ramp flank was ever to come. Defuse on Monty with the recovery. And a good one on that. Demker pushing A. Gets the information. We could see Monty were leading mid for a long time in that round. But Demker pushes through the A tunnels. He kills um, JK, I guess, falling out of mid. By that point, his teammates are flooding the B bomb site. And then Kraz now, for me, the critical kill in cave. Kills the sole cave player for Apex. Locks down that control. Gives Monty, uh, sorry, Apex no space to work with in the afterplant. And that was perfect. And look what he's done to the Apex money. Thank God they got a bomb plant. That at least gives them some util. But a great opportunity now for Monty. Good rifles across all players minus gives me. Plenty of util too to run exactly what they like. And this is the call. Aggression towards B. Strange on quick. It's a good trade. Bomb can be planted again. So now three of three on the bomb plants here at B. Ooh, the question is what can Nock do on the smoke fade? He actually shifts towards ramp. Thought he might play from the doors. But shifting into the site, no one's looking ramp right now. Tommy's going to be everything. And yeah, they're cautious. I know something happened with that deep smoke, but now here comes the strike. No one's looking ramp. And that's going to cost them. That's going to be the blunder. Sassanito, some damage, but this time three stay alive. Defuse once again. Not a lot of time to spare, but just enough. Monty pulling the lead. That was a well-coordinated retake. That was good. Mm, the letting the two players towards the B doors, coming up the B ramp, take first contact. They had the trade potential. Everyone else just held station. They had cave. Um, the player coming in from CT from the back lanes. Took it slow. Put a molly onto the long side. Made Apex very uncomfortable. And all in all, pretty clean stuff. This round is an eco for the most part. Sassanito has said, I love a cheeky Galil. Needs to justify this though, so let's see if he can find a frag. Taking the other side of the map this time. It's going to be up and towards tree. It's Stemka who's the backstop here. A little isolator for the moment. Oh, Shadow. Yep, he knows. Yeah. Shadow betraying you. Rays of light, but it's a D that'll do the damage. At least for a moment. They can at least add some blemishes on, but this time no bomb plant allowed. No bomb plant afforded. Mm. And Monty's starting to stack rounds. Looking good. And on the top right, reminder, guys, there's the veto. Ancient here is, of course, Apex's map pick. They have a long way to go here on Ancient, but they need to win it. Apex have not won a game of Mirage in 2020. Well, they've lost 10. And quite a few of those, not the most compelling uh, score lines either. So, as said, there's a lot of Ancient left to be played. But don't let it slip out of your mind how important this map is for Apex in this series. If they go down here, Mirage is scary turf to be playing on. A lot of space afforded mid. A lot of ground here. But it's being uh, covered up. Krasnall has responded. He's got Demka close at hand. So they recognize the vulnerability and they patched it. 50 seconds here. Apex is hoping for someone to get adventurous back in towards mid. Somebody that they could punish. 
That's not happened. Gives me... I don't know about the positioning there. Just kind of out in the open. Oh, Krasnoff coming back in. Dealing with it. So the A space isn't actually allowed. And the two B players have pulled back to anticipate mid. It's all under knock now. All the work in the world. If he can kill Krasnoff, well, that's not going to be a question we have to answer. Clean in the end. It's looking good for Monty. And the openers sitting back. I like how they're rotating on the CT side. Of course, there have to be gaps. If you're going to get aggressive on one side of the map with numbers, there's always going to be a space open. But it's the way they're reacting. They're covering off the deficiencies. They're making moves. They're being proactive. I like it. This is this is the Monty we grew used to. And of course, with such sweeping changes. You have to question if the identity is gone. But uh, it is prevailing. Tried and true. This round... Just a half buy for Apex. A bit of util. And for now, it is just Demka on the A side of the map. We use coming at the perfect time. Molly is so good. Does damage, slows him down. Great shooting from Demka. And this round is not looking promising for Apex. No. No, they're getting torn apart. These takes are so tough when you're living on utility, right? You're just kind of hoping to catch somebody off guard. Get a quick shot. It's not going to happen here. At least one more kill is a consolation prize. But at this point, the money for Monty is resilient. They don't need to worry about losses in the short term. And Apex need to take this time out. They need to get some things sorted out. Mither, getting in the ears of his young IGL because this has not been going to plan. He's doing some... What? What is, is the nice float? How's he doing this out? He's a trickster. A magician, you might say. Uh, they've got to conjure up something, haven't they? Because this T-side is starting to get into dangerous territory. Hmm. Hmm. They had, I mean, the first three rounds, right? They had success getting out B and planting, but they just cost them so many numbers yeah, well, that they could never hold problem, on to the post. problem for me was they never had cave. So they were always mm. planting. They always funneled back into ramp, and it's like you're going to get flanked or there's going to be a smoke in front of you. There's not a lot of room here to play with in the afterman. So I think the move is mid default, B default, take space. What? That would help. The problem is well, they come from it. They lose a bit more than they bargained for. Already a man advantage here for Monty. They have done so well with his early aggression. And Demker again hits home and hits hard. Strong enough. There's the spot on the ramp player. They know it's coming. Krasnall still can't hold on, but the op will collect. Can't save him. They're always in the right place at the right time today. How many yeah. times have they been stacking the right side come the actual hit? It's been really good. I, I think a lot of it... Well, we'll see if there's a chance at this round. I want to keep a lot of praise on just Demke individually, right? He's been all over the place. He's been A anchor. That round, he pushes down in towards mid, gets the critical kills there. He seems to always be giving them the information they need to keep the numbers in the right place. They're quite a fluid team. Always have been, Monty. Mm. Uh, they're very happy to... You know, if you're if you're the... It's not necessarily always the rotator that moves. It's the player that's best positioned to move, which is kind of how it should be, but uh, Monty to a higher degree than most teams... A lot of fluidity. Look at this buy from Apex. I guess it's just a half buy. They go quite a long way in. Yeah, I mean, it's like a three quarter buy. Yeah, well, I guess they know they're a max loss, but the bomb bomb's gonna be handy to guarantee a really good investment for some of these guys come the next. The problem is, is this telegraphed? I think Monty, surprised they haven't rotated more over. For now, they're neat. blocked by the smoke. Hmm. I think they're wondering if this is a fake, just because there was nothing else behind it, right? They're seeing the complete lack of utility over on the B side of the map, and they're questioning this. There's nothing mid. Krasnow's heard nothing from Cave. Krasnow now is taking info. This is the key juncture. But for now, it looks pretty good for Monty. It's just Emka. He doesn't have a molly this time either, so he's just got to do it by the might of his gun. Flashbang dodge. First kill found. Any more? No. Really work out for them this time and trying to get back through the show points. That's going to be costly. Krasnall run down as well. This one's finally working out for Apex. Well, that was punchy. That it was almost like 
That was almost perfect for Monty. And the player pushes when Krasnow pushes out Cave. He gets the mm. info that it's going to be A. Five seconds earlier, there's three on uh, on um, there's three on A. But that'd be Counter Strike. A little bit too late, and they're punished. This time they adjusted and Apex hit B. Find the space, sense two big kills. I don't even know that they were expecting to have this much space early on. But oh, Monty, where's the bank gone? Where has the bank gone? They had so much money. One lost round and now it's emptied. I mean, they've got to say, yeah, Alan. absolutely. And even then, not sure they'll be mustering more rifles in the next. Well, this round was kind of over before it started, and look at it in a macro sense. Monty started free B and haven't found a kill. Uh, that's a bit of a shame. Of course, good entries from Sense, but I'm I'm just sat here questioning how how Sense gets a good duel and wins it when there's so many players around. Like the squad. And my God, do they need these guns? They can't afford to lose all of them. Surely not. One will limp through. Tamco will have a rifle to work with here, but presumably they're not going to put anything around it. That well, was a disastrous round, and, and now Apex have built themselves the ability to get back into this game, right? Now you you run four, five rounds here. Now you want the ball game. Yeah. Beauty of Counter Strike, beauty of MR12. Just flip so fast and you shifts. break the money so fast. It feels like um, sometimes, you know, a CT side, it's like one of those, uh, one of those like tower builder mobile games where you're just trying to stack the blocks in the right place to create the strongest base. And eventually, you know, it's going to tip over, but you just want to get as high as possible before it does. Mm. And then you just get overwhelmed as soon as there's one. Round. Yes, kind of a house of cards. Sort of Takes a couple bad retakes. A few guns not saved. Bank goes. Full reset. You're in big trouble. And that's kind of where Monty is at the moment. Even their buy in the next will not be perfect. There'll be rifles across the board. But lacking a new ceiling kit. No damage taken. Five alive. Uh, Monty, uh, sorry, Apex are definitely buying for the 11th and 12th round in this half. Whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah, zero concerns. If Apex can get six rounds from a half where they got reset second round. That's pretty amazing. It's devastating when you lose that second round. Would be a mighty recovery. What a wood. Jacob trying to play with the uh, bug on the edge of the smoke. Keep his vision on, but Gizmi's ready for it. So man advantage early on. The MP9 converts. Cave's under threat. Sassanito on the other side. This has been a duel all game long. Between Sassanito and Krasnal. And Waro trying to join in on the party. Might get more than he bargained for. Question is knock. Question is knock, and if they push out elbow, because knock is super isolated right now. But if they push an elbow, he's got a bit of an advantage on that fight. Malta forces Ryu further in towards the cave. Sassanito, though, can't punish it. That was the whole scheme, was to push the player in for Sassanito to punish. They can't execute. And now they're in trouble. Now they're in real trouble. Sense lost. Demko on the scene. Body's oh, encroaching, and Stika's so wary to not give up the bomb, but he's got to be... On high alert, danger lurks around every corner. And on this smoke fade, oh, he's coming past Krasnall. He realizes it. 
that's good presence of mind. Could have been bad. Stiko's turning this around, though. Needs knock to support. Needs knock to help him out. Knock still holding for a window peak, but the bomb is going to be planted. The question is, can Stiko get away clean? No. No, it all falls to knock in the post plant. Does he know his morning attention? That's the question for me. Mm. Make a huge difference. There's no smoke for it. He's going to rely on the gun, not the molly. And that's going to cost him. So the answer is no. He does not know his molly lineup. That's seven on the board for Monty. I felt like a key round just to stabilize a little bit. That was starting to slip so fast. And um, when Stika got those two kills on Krasnal and uh, I guess it's Ryu in towards Cave. It's a little bit dicey. But a good retake. Nets a seven for Monty. Pours out from Apex, second only. As they have a quick discussion. Don't want to throw these rounds away. Presumably Krasnow has a rifle on the ground, as does Waro. And Presumably. He chimes in. Yeah, so guys, what you're going to want to do in this one is, uh, after you get the man advantage, uh, just uh, keep shooting them. Did I should coach? You should. Seems so easy. Coaching is the easy it's easy, part. right, Alan? The easy part is the game launch. Anyone can do that. Mm. Dealing with the personalities, we'll see. Ooh, knocks down with that personality. How does Monty react? They lost the player so early in this round. They haven't really got much information either to, you know, take space or stack yeah, the sides. Th they know that Nock likes to just play solo outside of elbow some rounds as well, so this really yeah. isn't a tip-off. This is the call, though. Look at this. Give B, fight mid. All four players, flashbang lined up. They're going to go in. Woo! Woo! Ooh, that was not in the plan. That was not in the plan. Oh, flashbang's on, and it's a disaster. It's an abject disaster. Apex, four on one now. They can just group and hit something. Stiko's trying to clear out A. And he won't even need a teammate. Nicely done, beautifully done from Apex. The early advantage sends us to the half.
Live we go. Dooley's galore over on the Apex side. They got the quaddies. I do like the quaddies. Ooh, look at this read. They're going 4A early on in the Apex side, and they've read it wrong. Monty. Not so interested in a little dish of A pull pie. Instead, they're going for plan B. Sassanito, though. See if he can make them regret their choices. He's got the bomb. Oh, if he'd hunted up that kill, it would have been absolutely incredible. As it is, they've still lost the site. The bomb can be planted. He's wasted a lot of time. They're still clearing cave. They are wary. Waro didn't want to give up his ground, so Krasnall had to come back and retrieve, and now they're ready to spring through this smoke. Sent just on the other side of things. Waiting for the lurk, waiting for the flank. Now he's got Waro. Can't deal with the ramp player. That was very awkward for sense. Get it done. But they are just ticking the defuse, and Jacob will make sure that no one will harry Stiko as this is carried out. Nicely done from Apex. Big round for Sassanito. Yeah. I mean, Jacob gets free, but Sassanito is, is the MVP of that round. His team had left him out to dry, essentially. Finds two kills. Must have burnt 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds there. Um, and that just allows more time for rotations. Apex set up for the retake. And they're right back in this game now. Bomb plant does enable a buy. waro has gone for AK no head armor. And not that much util, so... Have to rely on the rifles to, uh... Kind of be the point man as they take some space, I suspect. Uh, but for now, very slow stuff for Monty. Just waiting out this mid util. Boosting over the smoke, can't see anything. In they go. And given the B-lean from Apex, is really just JKM around to fight off mid. Check out the B-reaction. Lose mid, take B-ramp control. Let's see if Apex can readjust and clear out B. Oh, that's the bomb as well. That is perfect. Apex haven't adjusted numbers over here. But since it's just jiggling with a Molotov. There it goes. Well, timed waits till the last possible second to throw. Time is becoming a real issue here. You really can't bail out their mid. Third player starting to float over. They're stacking up in cave. Sassanito overwhelmed. Demka out on the ramp. This is a problem now. A chance at the bomb plate. Demka's just done this. Bomb down to dirt. Demka, the hero here for Monty to keep them fighting in this round. It was looking dire. It was looking disastrous, frankly. But now a 2v2, this is very viable, this is very doable. Stiko spots the boat getting out towards this fight, it's awkward, can Stiko trade? No! What went wrong, Alan? How did it all go so wrong? Yeah, okay, Bakes are asking the same questions. They had so much control early. They had information. Just weren't expecting Demka to do so much damage. Krasnall, of course, 1v2 at the end. Not bad either. It's actually Monty that calls the pause. Interesting. Maybe recognizing that this is a huge round in terms of resetting that Apex economy, getting them back on, you know, USPs, really standing home some authority. Of course, Ancient is so pivotal for this series for Apex. Mirage. Mirage has not been a kind home turf to them, to put it mildly. Okay. Quick discussion for Monty. I guess we should expect them to be very much on the same page going into this round with the call. Mm. No mistakes. That is the, uh, the aim of the game. Fear the deed. Yeah. 
It is interesting how the default stack for Apex. I feel like this is very counter to what a lot of teams like to run. But in the rounds where they're gamble stacking, it feels like Apex are leaning A. Good knock. You can't connect. Sassanino, though. Different story. And two players still towards A main. Demka comes in to clear it out late, but do they expect the second player here? That's the question. Well, now they certainly will. They know he's here. Stiku gets run down. The danger taken out of this round. Nine on the board for Monty. Doesn't get much better than that. Four alive. Now it would just be USPs for Apex. Monty looking in a really good position. It's looking really good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, should they win this map, we will reflect on it and say you won two reset rounds. You lost both pistols, but won the resets. That is, that is almost untenable on the flip side as Apex. And yet again, another. They have to swallow their pride. Pistols. Any damage here is good, I guess. Just feels a little bit doubtful. We're going to get much of it. Is me. Just ecos. Just put on a name, Klimic. Clinic. Klimic. 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 What's a Klimic? Don't know. Let me load up Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh boy. I'm doing it, and you know I am. Good news for you is there is no definition for it. Wow, really? Something that's not defined on Urban Dictionary. Truly spoken a new word into existence. All right, Gizmi. This one is certainly a clinic. Sassanito now going to try and make this possible, but the mid fight being so one sided is just never a good sign, right? Holding on, devoting so many resources, so much utility towards that mid battle. There's no more nades on this Apex side. That was the whole idea. Hold on towards mid, control the map by that. Just need the bomb. Yeah, this is a problem, actually. Waro, why are we? You've got the man advantage. Why are we walking smokes? Oh no. What are we doing? We're leaving big old gaps in towards mid. Uh, okay. They've well, done the hard is... work. They had the site. This is not ideal. Demka, though, he could still do this. But he will not. Good shot for Ryu. That's a bailout. Oh, I had the right idea. Oh, check out the read from Apex. I don't blame him. I mean, it's the logical thing. You'd think he would window rotate. He was going to window rotate, but something changed his mind. And, and now... they haven't got eyes on mid either. They, they can't confirm that he hasn't crossed. Mm. This is beautiful. Something this is playing is right into Ryu's hands. If he goes all the way to kill Stiko, that would be incredible. But he's running out of time here. He's running out of time. He's running out of chances. He thinks there might be a player tucked here towards long, but no. Oh, it's going to be a bomb plant. He can't believe his luck. Good check. Stiko stuck. Bombs down. It's very open as well for the post plant. Ryu doesn't know which way they're coming from, but... Oh, this is interesting. Playing back pillar. Because of how open that bomb plant is, you'd think he'd either be ramp or cave. They're not likely to expect this lineup, and knock responds in time. What a, what an effort from Ryu. Nearly bringing that through, but it will be Apex to keep fighting. Yeah, but we can't we can't ignore what happened in that round, can we? That was no, a blunders. bomb site fully in Monty's control. Demka pushes a smoke. Nobody's really Oral. making a move for the bomb. Should never have gone to Ryu to clutch it in a one on two. Oh well. At least I got a lot of money. I guess the bomb plant helps with that as well. Apex's loss bonus is, is dwindled, so in that sense, if Monty can win this round, um, they are ever so close. Series. Ooh. All right.
right. Little smoke spam. Nearly finds some Ryu. Look at how far up Gizmi is, though. And now Waro finds a kill. This is so much pressure on. And if at this point Apex stumbles, I mean, this map's mm. over. I think with how Nork is playing as well, Apex might not think a player could have crossed into with red. I mean, surely they have to know now, right? Yeah, yeah now it's They've... a possibility, but they still got to take risks. Double A push, of course, leaves all of mid. Donut included. Terribly exposed. I think this match little... has to find a frag. I think it has to do work. It does. I, I, I'm a little surprised even that Sense is staying this far forward in towards ramp. They have to be wary of the rap. Oh, hey, push goes one for one. Not ideal. And now Jismi is, in fact, up in towards mid. So Sassanito, on notice, is he Such aware? A Such a good position. All he needs is his teammates to do a little bit to pull some attention. This is perfect now. Got a rotation. A. B. It all works. Everything diverts. Crosshairs away from mid, and, and Gizmi's going to pounce soon, surely. One would think. Just hanging on to the spot. Gizmi, though, not going out, and now his teammates run right into the uh, rifle of Nock. They'll catch a rotation. Time. Not for free, but they're out of time. They're out of clock. They're out of round. Gizmi <laughs> trying to play this too safe. And never being able to capitalize. Yeah, Monty could just never put the pieces together, could they? They had all of them. Hesitation, maybe? They uh, Anything would have worked there. Hit B with the flying from Gizmi. Hit A with Gizmi ready to swing and trade. I don't want to point the finger just at him, obviously. Uh, you know. Point no it, point it. To learn at playing at this level. But, um, yeah. Something wasn't functioning right there for Monty. They should have won that round. What was the analogy you used earlier? Tower defense? Oh, a tower construction, really. Yeah, well, yeah, the problem for Apex Tumbling is... tower. Apex is winning these rounds, granted, but their money and their loss bonus, crucially, is just falling by the wayside. Hmm. They lose one, and this is practically now over. So, you know, the last two rounds, of course they'll take them. Of course they'll take the round wins, but they are still in the thick of it right now. I mean, it's also... That last one, they should have won, right? By every expectation, they should not have been winning. Uh, and the, the walk through smoke as well. Like, yeah. they, they're yeah. getting lucky. It's mistakes from the other side as opposed to anything in particular that Apex is doing. And now again, they lose the first kill. So 5v4 established once more. Monty, tremendous effort on these this time. Gizmi will not have all this space for free. So numbers evened up. So it's a blessing for Apex. And Sense just jiggling with the Molotov. It's going to be Sassanito. He's got to be ready. This way. That shot is a lethal from Waro. A headshot to boot. And now Sense is under so much threat. Puts a smoke down to give himself some room to maneuver. But the main pop on it. They're ready for him. And they've dealt with it. And this could be the wheels coming off. Knock. Might just try and back away. He's locked out by smoke. He's desperately trying a spam, but this is going to be a bomb plant. This is going to be an 11th round for Monty, and this is going to be money hurtling out of control for Apex. Uh, and it comes tumbling down. At least these rifles look set to be saved. But, um, yeah, credit to Ryu. We saw this yesterday, didn't we? Up against NIP. He's so good at opening up rounds. Borrow here as well, of course, the frag on to, um, um, Sassanito, I guess it was in towards Jag. That one was critical. And I'm hoping for Apex's sake that they do not overface. They cannot lose these rifles. And Demka knows it. Terrorists win. Okay. Well, it's a little bit of a silver lining, but it's a thin one. Do Apex even have a pause left? If they do, they should take it to have a conversation. They've got to buy, I think. Uh, 
this feels of a technical nature, but I guess things do have the discussion. If you're an Apex fan, I think this should be panic stations. Oh, yeah. You're Decidedly in the lower bracket. Stations. You've got Mirage up next. And you're about to force in with everything you've got to try and stay in this game of Ancient. The Swedish knock fans face with the prospect of not seeing their boy, Yan Shiping, weeping openly, distraught. Tearing hair from head. I mean, they still got Nip coming later, so I don't think it's <laughs> the end of the world. But the knock, the knock. Just hearing in our ear that one of the players has some ping spikes. So, internet oh, is not with us today. Ooh, we're Should off. get ping we're smooth. Off. We're, off. we're off. We're good. Smoothed out those spikes. You want to know a fun fact, Alan? Tell me. So if you've ever had, like, uh, speaking of spikes, like micro splinters, um, an obvious example is like fiberglass. If you've ever handled yeah, like yeah, fiberglass yeah, yeah. or yeah, insulation yeah. or any of that, you get those tiny little splinters in your hand. You know the best way to get them out? I do not. Tell me. So you take a bar of soap and you put it in something nylon. The obvious example is pantyhose, like that thin mesh nylon. Yeah. Pantyhose work great for this. Um, and you use that. You wash with that, and the, the the material will actually pull all the little spikes out of your skin. Is this first-hand? Have you had to... Yeah, working employ? on a boat, you work with fiberglass sometimes. Okay, yeah. um, and fiberglass splinters are just a nightmare to get out. Um, so, yes, I have I have employed it before. But it's useful for other things, like uh, if you've ever been around cactus, like prickly pear. If you yeah, grab yeah, yeah. prickly pear, this I've done before as a kid, where I was like, ooh, prickly pear fruit, and grabbed it. Nope, don't grab it. It's tons of tiny little spikes. Immense pain. Um, Prickly pear was one of my granddad's favorite foods. Interesting. Yeah. Where did your... Cypress. They have prickly pear and cypress. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. It's quite arid. Nah, yeah, checks out. There you go. Prickly pear and pigeon pie. Mm. Shot Doesn't himself. Sounds delicious. Taking out the sky himself. Your granddad sounds like an interesting character. Built his house with his bare hands. Is the one he had like dogs up in the mountains too yep. or something? Bitten by a snake. Interesting and character. I had to shoot it. Hell of a life, Grandpa Hender. Was this the Hender side or the other no, side? No, Caligiru. Mm, that is a cooler last Bit name than Hender, I'm not going to lie to you. It's also that my middle name is Michael on paper, but it should be Stelios because I'm named after my granddad. It's just that Michael is the anglicized version. It should be Stelios. You, well, you should just go with Stelios. I do. That's what my Tinder says, so it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Stolen Cypriot Valor. <laughs> Well, Why not? <laughs> let's go. Sneak out on the line. Needs to hold strong. Gets one. Stays alive. Important. And that's going to set up Jacob for the trade. It's elsewhere, but that's the wrong side of the map. Action's going on here. 15 seconds. And Krasnall's so far removed, he just doesn't have time for this. Sassanito should know. I don't even know if there's a chance at the bomb plant. Oh, Finish Krasnall food. has to force it down. He knows. Oh. He's out of time. He's out of time. Sassanito backs away. He's done enough. Apex is really going to win this map after being the definition of on the ropes for the last three or four rounds. I mean, there's just so many moments for Monty. We've had so many moments this half. It's not normally how you expect Ancient to go, where they are main advantage. 5v4, 5v3, 4v3. And they just run the clock down and, and don't seem to like... They don't seem to be actualizing on the information that they have available to them. I think that's the most confusing part. We're looking at it. We're looking at the control at the kills that they've gained. And we're thinking, okay, they should be aware of this. They should be aware of which site to go to. And it's just taking a little bit too long to get there. Yeah. 
it's got to be communication, I think. And, you know, it's easy for us to say we have X-Ray, we have the overview. I when do enjoy being in, omniscient. You know, when you're in the game and you're just working up the information, you have a lot, you know, the fog of war is real. You, you, you have to have really good communication even to make the simplest of overall reads. And I guess for Monty... I mean, Ryu gives me, Ryu especially, they're great mechanical prospects, but it, it's just the reality of coming up to this level of competition, their awareness, the communication, and then being decisive yourself critically off that communication. You don't learn this stuff overnight. There's a reason, you know, teams win majors. Yeah. And um, on the flip side, Apex... Apex are not playing as well individually. They are not getting as many opening kills. But in the late round scenarios, they're doing a better job. Early round, though, still problems. And a big one is here. Kizumi has been great. He's been winning these early exchanges so consistently in mid, and that's such an asset to an ancient T-side. I mean, look at this now. They've got the right read. Monty has the right pieces put together. But what is Waro watching? He's got no support. He's left alone. So that kill gets brought back. Trying to pressure in here. Demko alive for the moment. Stiko under threat, but he's got a teammate. Gives me he's worked his way through mid. This time he's not waiting. This time he's not going to run out of clock. This time he's got knocked back exposed. It's all on to Stiko. Can't hold on, and this could be it. This is looking like map point, unless Sassanito is something truly incredible. He's even being flanked out. He's even being pinched in Demko with a shot in the back of the head. We'll end this round. I think a breath of relief for Monty and all the fans at home. And critically, no saves for Apex. Their buy will be dreadful in this round. Util will be a sparing, to put it mildly. Just sense. And he has to give up his body armor to get the couple little nades they have. Burns it immediately for mid. I'm not even sure that was worth it. What does it achieve? Players are out in front already. What are you supposed to do if you're Apex? Hit headshots? Have you got any other way out of this? Kind of it. Kind of the only chance. But let's see. They're getting adventurous. This is the bomb. This is the bomb. Oh no, Stiko looks the wrong way. Demka playing the off angle is enough. Does he expect the second player here, though, is the question. Oh, the reload! Get that sidearm out, son! Nope, not gonna do it. Bomb now found. Rifle picked up. Conveniently reloaded for him, but Jacob! Not quick enough on the response. So it's a man advantage. The bomb can be reclaimed, and okay, walking smoke. Sense getting a little desperate here. Monty now starting to stack the numbers, and what was already looking dire is looking downright impossible here comes the next push you got to do something that's the way they're feeling but with the player spotted surely monty should just hit a they know there's a maximum of one player there stalling this out could just get you caught on the flank Nonk is certainly trying to make it so what are they waiting for are you still unaware that this push could have come through but it's a nigh on impossible 3v1 for Nock. The bomb will be planted. There's not even a kit, is there? No. Can't be. Bomb is wide. Borrow's even flanking mid. Yeah, this should be done. This should be settled business. There should be no path out of this. It's got to go quick as well. This is just... Nothing is working in Nock's favor here. And down he falls. Down he tumbles. Monty Triumph. Snatch away their opponent's map pick. And frankly, I think the thing that's most surprising about this is that our conclusion is that really should have been more comfortable for Monty. I ha it's kind of similar to what we felt after the NIP series, where it's like, this Monty team, they have some issues. Their comms isn't perfect. They're, they're betting in these new players. But they're so close. Yeah. They're so close to being dominant in some of these maps. They, they really could have beaten NIP on Anubis and 2-0 in that series. It's just a little bit too early in the life cycle, but that's it's kind of exciting because Ryu gives me, they're so new to this level of competition, of course they're going to get better in these respects as we go along. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they made a bit of a meal of it, I guess, in the end, but a map win is a win, and Mirage is such 
it's so good for them statistically. It's so one-sided when you look at the veto in this matchup that Monty have got to be feeling great now going into map number two. Yeah, I mean, it 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 it, it harkens to your point. Uh, you're seeing the firepower. You're seeing the promise of Kizmi, what he's able to do there in mid, what Ryu has been able to do all qualifier long. And now the question is just getting on that same page, the level of communication. Remember, this the previous Monty team wasn't that good until they'd been together for, you know, three to six months. You need that kind of chemistry for a team that likes to read and react and play so fast. You need to have that sort of instantaneous communication. And when you have five players who don't actually share the same native language, it takes some time to build that cam. It takes some time to build those columns to make sure that you are on the same page, that all your players know what's happening. I think that there's a lot of promise. There's a lot of excitement. And certainly there's a lot of excitement for us in the next map. We're going to be headed to Mirage right after this break.
this chemistry One look at you and my heart explodes Just let me be the one you keep I'll be right here through the heart and cold But I'll be loyal to you No need for drama Farewell with you Cry like a impala Is it important for you? Huh? Oh, it even helps if my mic's unmuted. So there we go. Mm. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back as we get ready for bout number two uh, between uh, Apex and Monty. That was quite a strong showing from Monty, and we even felt that it could have been stronger. Now we head to Mirage, a mount that's great for them, a mount that's been atrocious for Apex so far this year. What do you make of it, Alan? All good things, I guess, for Monty. I mean, the, the only kind of uh, unknown, I guess, here is that they haven't played it. They played it, they played it once with this lineup, I think. And then apart from that, let's have a look. This one's the end of 31st. Now, they have played it a couple times, but they haven't played it many with this lineup. And they haven't... They've only won it once, I think, with this lineup. So, uh, they won it twice. Going back. I'm going back. Yeah, they won it twice with this lineup. Um, so, I guess they got a little bit of experience, but that that's the only... That's the only possible issue i think here for monty just the, for this lineup with this five then played a great deal of mirage everything else every other indicator form on ancient form in the rest of the tournament form coming into this on mirage the individual firepower it all points towards monty despite being the underdog in the series overall being a favorite i think from for mirage the, the thing i will say i'll make the case for apex uh they've played it 10 times so far this year they've lost every single one but here's the but uh, they've all been really close. There's been a lot of 13-11s in there. There's been an overtime game. Um, and certainly, if you keep playing Mirage, you keep leaving it open in your veto, you keep knowing other teams are going to pick it, you have to have been working on it, right? Like, this has to be a priority point for Apex. Otherwise, you just, just constantly have a glaring weak spot. 
in every map veto. Is this the, um, you know, the gamblers betting double the amount every time fallacy? They just keep going, yeah. just keep playing Mirage. They're going to win eventually. Surely. I mean, this is a nice start to it. Okay, looking clean in this pistol. Sense and Sassanito combining well. They've got a flank developing early on. They went for an early mid push, and that means that Jacob's going to be in the back lines before Monty's expecting it. Move all the player out towards ticket. I mean, a bomb plan here feels like an impossibility. Oh, no, Jacob. Come on now. Oh, boy. Oh, it's all going to be fine. The flank doesn't quite go to plan, but everything else does. Okay, good start. That's what we needed. Pissed around. No plan for Monty. What they needed. Okay. Uh, are Monty going to buy anything? No. Just the uh, rattlesnakes out in play. Oh, Mori's got a piece of 50. Well, if they can find a cra uh, one frag, that would be pretty good going, I think. I believe in two. I'm going for two. Both of them coming from... We're going to go with R R Ryu in this round. I'm surprised Jacob wants to play top mid. It feels like there's nothing stopping Especially a couple guys from coming under, and then he's just sandwiched. Yeah, he needs help. If you want to play this, that's fine, but if you have a con player... So weird to leave him on an island here against pistols. I, they must have been expecting the force buy. Because this does feel like an incredibly strange way to play if you're just against the locks. Well, Jacob's going to farm it up. And it is, in fact, all good. Oro gets the one. He's not going to get my two kills. None of them are going to be on Ryu. But, you know, you miss every shot you don't take, Alan. Yeah. I guess so. Rifles out. AKs across the board for Monty. Norks managed to muster an AWP very early on. Where's he going to position that? Of course, window will be the standard. And... the case. He's there at the start. I shake him nearby. Early mid smokes for Monty, but that is a ruse. It's going to be an A hit. Free in Palace. For now, it is just sense anywhere near A. Where you guess his first? Couldn't get it with the P250, but he is doing it here. Rifle makes that a little bit easier. Ooh, the face in maybe a little bold for Gizmi without the flash. They don't have any more flashes, so there was none to spare. Resmoke on, 4 on 4 in this retake. Still a couple Molotovs as well. Demkis needs to deploy the forest. That horse has cast Sassanito forward. Right into the barrel of Waro, and that appears to have been enough. Apex do not fancy this. The reposition from Nock tells me everything I need to know. They're not going for this. It's just not worth it, is it? Steeker has dropped one, asking JKM. To keep these guns going. It's definitely a buy in the next. Can't afford, though, to die on the retreat. Not getting away. Gonna be borderline now. Good for Monty. And we had a great read, be had a bit of luck. Perfect time for there just to be the sole A defender. And Sense could never get a good fight. Hmm. Never get a good fight. Feels like a lot of what Apex likes to do on the CT side, and this is true of most maps, they like to get flanks. They like to go for pushes. I mean, you even saw it in the pistol round, right? The push up mid mm -hmm. very early on, just not something that's very orthodox to do in a, in a Mirage pistol. This is what they like to do. And I my, feel uh, like... My criticism is why is Sense playing solo aggressive on the side? He's alone. Yeah. If he's... If the, if the call is let's fight mid, why is Sense in a position he can get isolated? That's the problem. And not to say it's just sense. Where are the... You know, did Apex have a good throw? There's a lot of layers to it, but fundamentally... Um, not quite on the same page. 
And that is not a good way to start this round. JKM already down for the count. I mean, this is Monty as well playing to what they expect from Apex, right? That's three players just sitting in the underpass waiting for the push to come through, knowing that the push is going to come through. And sure enough, Jacob serves himself up on a silver platter. I think Apex needs to stack, don't they? Look at their nades. They've got no kits. They can't really afford to let this go oh, to a coming standard executing on an afterplant. Oi, this is the round. This is the, such a risk. He misses. Well, it's over. It's effectively over. You need a hero play from one of Sassanito or Sense because they're going to crunch on towards this A site. They know they've got Sassanito under pressure. They know they've done damage to him. And, and actually, they control both peripheries, so they could take it either way. Yeah, really pick your poison now. here. Definitely NB now that Sense is going to frag. But it's perfect. Apex had to just play off the information at their disposal. I don't blame them for leading numbers A. But it hasn't worked out, and it's, it's the same story again. Best case scenario is saving rifles. You can just feel the pressure that Apex put themselves under, right? Jacob goes for that underpass peak, dead. Nock feels like he has to bring something back, pushes top mid, dead. I mean, it's just... It's very individual on these CT sides. It's one player taking a peak, taking a fight. There's no support for it. There's no flashbang for it. There's no nothing really for it. And it does not work out. It's also... No survivors. It's also... It's, it's so easy to look in those... You know, in a man down or equally even in the five on five when they just had no nades. They couldn't play a slow round. And look at it and say, okay, somebody needs to do something. But you've hit the nail on the head. It's because they're doing it alone. And equally, we're not saving a lot of these guns either because we're not working well together to save the guns. It all adds up, and this is the result. They're back on USPs. Fly out a connector. And it's in the house and abattoir. Free for Monty, money in the bank too. I'm getting nervous for Apex. You're only five rounds in, but I'm getting nervous. kit for the defense Oof. Oh. here we go here's a peek again it's just a try peek in but it works out they're at least doubled up and Sassanito wins the duel in apartments I, I still don't feel like this could be sustained but they get away with it this time sometimes that's all you need space in towards mid I think the big question now Alan is how healthy can they stay it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Let's see if Monty can cook. Is me? Well. He's definitely not going for a stealthy approach. He's trying to bring in attention, I think. Not going to work out. Kyle's not trying to creep up. Ryu get nothing. It's looking good. All right, Krasnall. What do you have for us? A bit of damage? Okay, one at least. A blemish on the record. A second found. They can't let this get expensive. That was the op out of play. Oh, they don't have any money to spare. This Molly might finish off sense. Ooh, he's got to be away from that tick. Bombs now down. Krasnall, he's making this work. How on earth is he making this work? But the last spray gets away from him. Focused on the stairs player. He's not ready for Stiko behind. And so three will limp through. But look at that health. This almost came together. Krasnall is so dangerous. Sense took a tick of that molly. I think it only did one damage, the tick. Quite incredible. Um, but as you said, the, the economic damage isn't something to be sniffed up. Sniffed up. Totally leaves Apex in a bit of a precarious position. As we get into round number seven, both teams fall by. Monty choose to open. They've done a lot of set plays, and this round is no different. It could be the Palace round again, and I think it is. This time, though, look at the difference. JKM's in Sandwich. It will not just be Sense alone. It will not be as easy. Jacob. Jacob. 
Down for one. Oh, of course, it's just the ticket player. Oh, they try and plant the ticket. That's a blunder. You didn't have any control. You didn't have any vision. And Stiko might just punish them. Stiko down. Now they can do so. This is a very early run for mid from Moro. The bomb is not yeah. down. Oh, now it won't be. Uh-oh. Waro still should have this con player. Yeah, this is no world where you expect it to be this close already. Again, as you said, the bomb's not planted, and Waro, it works out beautifully for him. What's the idiom? Thin line, genius, and insanity. Sure. I think for a lot of that, it was in the insanity realms. <laughs> but it works. You still see the gaps, though, for Monty. They... They did. They they clean the site, but they don't put any util into CT. They don't have you know flash a player in to clear it, then plant. The flow chart wasn't quite there, um, but they still make it work. And Apex now out of cash, all invested into this one. No kits. Similar story to what we saw earlier with having to do get aggressive, take gambles. They haven't got the kits or the util to play an extended round. This time the plan was be aggression, but. I think they had to reroute. In the meantime, Monty's free. Waro is doing even more damage. And Apex look rattled to me. Shot on. And unfortunately for Apex, I think they might just have to concede this round. They've really got nothing to get them back in. The positioning is poor. There's no kits. There's no real utility. There's a smoke and a flash. Limited on the weapons as well. Yeah, they know. They know what we know. Which is that they've got no business going for this. Now the question is how many bodies can they keep alive? Really Demka struggled. has been really patient. to save on this half. And this one matters probably more than most. Oh, Temka finds another. Sense felt like he had to deal with the wolf at their back to keep the sheep safe. Well, he may have failed as a shepherd. Crunch on in, Demka. Oh, just feasting here. One gun makes it through. Barely there for Stiko. This is this is a disaster. The flock's been slaughtered. It's just Stiko, the lone survivor. There's no guns to build on into this round. And Monty. I mean, it feels like so many of these takes are just so easy for them, right? It's like one kill, rounds over. One flash, rounds over. They're, they're playing fairly yeah. straightforward Mirage, and it's working. There's got to be a reason Apex has lost 10 in a row. 2024 Mirage. And it comes down to the small things, doesn't it? This round. Ryu almost caught. Almost punished. It's a little bit too fast. Our Almas is just the pistols. Best chances if Sense can rotate and put this gun to use. Just need somebody to scoop up the bomb, does Monty. I think they'd be A-OK. -okay. It's just Sassanito. One player on a Deagle bench. Well, the doctor's ordering highlight play. Let's see what we get. Not much. I still play above the smoke. I mean, turn those around. Oh. Just enjoy the individual highlights. Have we seen enough to describe this as disastrous for Apex, yeah? Uh, worrisome. A couple mm. more, and we'll go for disastrous. Mm. It's, it feels like... It almost... Alright, I'm gonna do a little armchair psychology here, if you will. Allow me this, Alan. Um, 
it feels like this is a team that's in their heads about a map like Mirage, right? Losing 10 in a row, having so much difficulty on it. They're trying to do too much in so many of these rounds, right? They're going for so many pushes, so many aggro holds, and you can just see Monty's just waiting for it half the time because they know. They know Apex tendency here. And it's not... Like, there's ways that you can do calculated aggression. This is certainly a map that lends itself to it, but it's a lot of dry pushes, dry peaks. Just taking a fight, taking a corner, just seeing if you can win the duel, and if you lose that 50-50 fight, the round's in disaster. Yeah. I mean, I sure remember when I was coaching Endpoint, if we had any maps that were quite... Inferno was always a problem. And we went back to the drawing board several times. We could just never find a way to play it. Mm. Um, and our best results came when we just tried to play standard. In, even, if, even if we knew the spots weren't perfect for the players, we just put them in the most comfortable that we could find. Um, and that's maybe what you're getting at here is Apex certainly going into uh, Copenhagen would have been practicing a lot of Mirage. You do not go to a major with a, you know, a weakness in your map. And I just wonder if, you know, they've added a lot of stuff and you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, trying to change too much at the same time. Maybe they'd be better off just playing standards in Counter-Strike. They've played a lot of Mirage with these individuals, obviously. Hmm. But three rounds to go in this half. That is not a lot of time to make changes. Check out Sassanito. He's just pushed B. Gives him something. Got some space. Something to operate off of. Who's the bomb the is going to come back to B in the end? Let's see. Or is sticking around in A ramp? Okay, it's going to be an A split. This is good setup. Best. This is this is the best position Apex has been in for a long time. Mm -hmm. It just comes off of. Holding on to it. They don't have utility. Oh, and they just lost the first kill. First domino goes against them. So now the defense is split. Stiko should be able to get here in time, but knock. Missed shot. He's traded out. So it falls apart. They try and play a bit more standard, but this one comes down to you do have to win your fights. And not a one goes their way. Bomb down. Sassanito. I mean, it, it's a save, but it just feels disastrous, right? Yep. The money's going to be in shambles again. You're starting to get to that point where you almost feel like you have to try and pull off an insane 1v4 hero play because nothing is working. This is... This is officially panic stations now. <laughs> yeah. They need... They would also only paused once until a couple of rounds ago, so they definitely need another one of those. Um... And because they're not saving guns Evo, we're never getting repeat buys. I mean, as you kind of hinted there, we might be getting enforced by characters soon. Given the way this has gone. I think, though, they got to seed it. I think they got to give this one. Allow Monty a good route up to eight, but at least ensure another buy in round number 12. Let's see. It should just be a half buy here. Whereas for Monty... It's also too easy in this matchup to say, you know, Apex is really bad on Ancient, you know, they can't find a consistent playstyle. Monty are punishing, they're finding the gaps, their defaults are clean, they're running simple but well-executed rounds in my book, and it's working. They're the better team right now on Mirage, and it's bearing out heavily, of course, in the score in the score line. They've been brilliant. Look at this, though. Jacob's found the vacant space. Okay, hold on. This is another dry push. This time it's working out for them. Demka, though, has a chance to change that. Ooh, who flinches first on this palace fight? Was that balcony footstep close enough for Demka to hear it? I don't think so. That might put them on high alert. This is where Monty is going back to their default. We've taken mid control. We've got a player towards either boundary. 
We're waiting, and then we're going to read and react. Emka's throwing a bit of a flash, trying to throw a bit of a fake. They're not biting too heavily because of Jacob's forward position. Which means the three players are stacked up in towards B, and now... Nox getting a bit adventurous here by the bricks. Iku goes looking. That's a big kill found. That's a rifle. And that might funnel them back in towards A. The bomb shifting this way. Question becomes, ah, oh, Sassanito can't hang on. Caught from ladder. That's a problem. They lose the cat player as well. So now mid is shut down. Pressure on. Sense in trouble. And utility being set up for this A take. What can Jacob get done from the palace? He's got to be the hero of this round. There's just no other way around it. Stiko's coming on the flank as well, but if they can get the bomb punched in before this happens. Ah, oh, they lose sense again in the window. In these flanks now, there's nothing to play off of. Except the element of surprise. Stiko gets what? Might have Demka as well, but all right. Demka just sits in the flames and secures it. Good round from, from Gizmi as well. Mechanically, he's a great. Looks so good over the last few days. Combined with the games from Demka and Waro, no surprises really. The Monty are having a great time. I think another aspect of this half is, in terms of healthy full buys, I reckon Apex have only had two or three this entire half. Their economy has been a mess. And this round is one of their better ones. Got to capitalize though. They wanted to go for mid aggression, but they've lost their soul B defender. This mid aggression. Uh, it's got to do something, because Waro's got B. Ooh, Jacob. Erased. Tagging a frag coming through. <laughs> I still don't know that Waro's here. Ah, uh, there's still another world here. All right, world, well, time to activate. Sleeper cell activated. Secret agent activated. Speaking of secret agents, Sassanito gives him the switcheroo. Slips down under. What can he do, though? There's still so much work to be done. He's found Waro. I was to expect the next, but he's not prepared for Krasnow through the market window. Nine rounds on the board. Utter domination this half. And we'll take a break to try and shake it off.
right with you I'm gonna hold on to you This one could be quick, folks. We're back in at the half, and Apex have been getting battered. Um, if anything, this scoreline actually is even worse than it looks, because Apex won the pistol and the follow-up. Yeah. And then outside of that, one more of the next ten rounds. One gun round. On their Mirage CT One side. gun round. Well... Needless to say, Mike, uh, they need a good start oh, this half, and a missed molly, not ideal. Oh, boy. Let's see, four on four, possibility. Yeah, I don't know about sticking on your plant spot when you start getting spam before the smoke blooms, but he'll try and commit. Also, Nino and Jay can bring in the kills. This pistol round might be theirs as well, but it's it's crazy. They're going to win this pistol, and even in this pistol, I can see the signs of how disjointed it is. The missed Molotov, the missed timing on the smoke bloom. Like, this is just... This is one of the most disjointed mirages I've seen in a very long time, and I watch NACS. I watch UK Counter-Strike. Don't know what you're moaning about. Well, Gizmi's here. This is still qualifies. Yeah. Hey, he's been good, all right. He's been good. But yeah. I think Apex have a lot to prove to themselves and us. As we get further and further into Mirage. Waro says... No respite. No easy rounds. Demka does damage. Not the frag, though. But uh, we know the truth. We know how dangerous Monty are on this sort of investment. Waro... Hitting shots like is his middle name. Fear of God in Apex right now. Where do they want to go? This does want to finish B. Bomb positioning tells us that. Though I suppose if Sense gets enough space here out of Khan, he could call them back through the underpass. Still a minute. There's plenty of time to cook. There's no reason to rush this. Resmoking smoking towards mid, but the B players want to commit. Now sense has been lost, so that's definitely going to tip the scales. In towards B they go. It's Ryu here. We have seen Ryu hit some insane headshots. <laughs> Speaking of headshots, knocked down. This is an absolute Now they've got the guns. Uh-oh. Oh, Ryu's going to collect. Not quite a Juan dig, but he'll take it either way. One more bullet in the gun, but the chance at a bomb plant is gone now. Every second inch is closer to Jacob's execution, and there it'll be at the oh hands my. of Krasnal. Oh, forced by one. I mean, put them out of their misery at this point. Apex looking like they need to be taken out back behind the shed. It's graphic, but it's true. I think it's fair. It's fair to call this a disappointing performance, isn't it? It's fair to say we expected better things out of this series. Where are Apex? Where are they? Uh, gone. Shell shocked in their heads. I don't even know. Um, this is a tough mirage to diagnose because it just feels like. 
I don't know. It feels like the, the, the worst parts of what we saw from Apex at the very beginning of this year, where there were a lot of moments where it, they filled like five people playing Counter-Strike independent of one another as opposed to five fingers of a hand. There's less of that now, but it still seems to be so disjointed here. And, and Mirage should be the map that's like the most obvious. Even for teams that don't prac Mirage, they should know how to play Mirage. J Kem and Stiko who have played so much yeah. world class Mirage over the years. It just it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. It really is bizarre. It feels like they're in their own heads. Missed smoke. Missed smoke again. Warl has a gap to exploit. Oh, this is actually a CT smoke. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's on me, folks. That's on me. I'm just seeing I'm seeing demons right now. Nice sense. Nice shot. Get something off the pistols. Gizmi says no. Maybe uses a few too many bullets. Well, the problem is Demk is still in, in Palace. Yeah, he just has a Mac 10. Oh, that's the bomb. Oh, no, that's the bomb. And now Demk has the freest kill of his life. And Nock has no chance. No way, no how. Monty race towards this finish. Race towards the 2 0. Race towards oh. the lower bracket final. And I guess Apex has to just buy again. Eight would be too much. You're not winning eight in a row. Yeah. And they recognize the uh, severity of the situation. This looks so good for Monty. They've been... I mean, Ancient had its awkward moments, let's call it. But overall, a really great day of CS from them so far. And check out Apex. Simple call, straight out A. Smoke on the Molotov. First kill doesn't go their way. Neva does the second. The bomb is... Well, near being planted, it's just stuck behind firebox, and this is a massacre. This is this is a decimation. This surely is over. Stick a fork in Apex. They are done. Cooked. Fried. Toast. I mean, there is just nothing left in this team. It feels they're just so deflated. I'll give it one last try. Deegs, attack nine, a single rifle. Nikolil. What do they got for us? Meanwhile, on the other side, I mean, full praise on. Monty's been playing great. The individuals have been sharp. They've done a great job of reading and reacting. Demka's had some nice control in towards Palace that's caused lots of problems. But um, I haven't necessarily had the stiffest test in this one. Here comes the play. Gives me one, gives me two, gives me... Can't quite get away, but you know, the exchange rate's not bad. That's the hmm. bomb. Dropped on catwalk now. You're gonna need Steeko to pull off a miracle here from apartments with the Deeg. I think that's about the only way this goes uh, in Apex's favor. He currently has the catwalk player back turn, but yeah, great sense of timing for Krasnall. Okay, now it is actually just Stiko, one man against the world. And information given up. Stiko hits the first. This would be truly incredible, but he's not ready for Waro to be so close, and it is 13 to 4. Monty wastes no time. That is utter domination from start to finish. They. Apex won both pistols. Apex won both pistols and lost 13 to 4. I that was that was astonishing. That was that was I mean, that looked like just completely different weight classes. Apex should not be a team that's getting absolutely battered like this. Yeah, and we came into this series and we said, rightfully so, that all the asterisks are against Monty. They're the team that's made changes. They're the team that's in flux. They're the team that has some inexperienced players at this level of competition that should be making mistakes. You remove the, the nameplates in this series and you probably think Apex just won it. <laughs> um, complete role reversal. And yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that that, that is... Apex will be disappointed and that is that is some of the lowest level CS they've played for a while. It's it's harsh, but it's true and, and, and they know it better than anyone that that wasn't good enough and they deserve to lose that series unfortunately yeah yeah i don't think there's any other way to spin this yeah. i just it's it that was a shocking mirage that was a shocking mirage from apex i don't 
I don't know what to make of it. All right, let's take a look at the bracket to see where we're at, uh, because we are going to have a nice uh, long break here before our second matchup of the day. I'm still going to need to wrap my head around what we've seen. We are going to be watching Aurora versus NIP up here on the A stream, but over on the B stream, Nao and Scriv will be keeping you company mm. with a little uh, Monty versus the winner of this blessed Metasport game. It is one all yeah. at this point. They're headed into map yeah, three. So map two's just finished. Um, yeah, they just traded their Two map very one-sided maps. Yeah, I'm surprised. The, the, the Blessed team, of course, earlier they beat Gamer Legion. In the, uh, granted, you know, a lot of changes to the Gamer Legion, but still. Good result for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, we probably expect Metasport to win that series, but never say never. Could be Blessed. Uh, here on the A stream, we're going to have the Aurora NIP game uh, in mm. about two hours 20 minutes we'll be on two hours 10 minutes ish so a bit of a break for us but as you said mike um there's no reason to stop watching the counter strike go and watch the b stream see who uh monty's gonna face next pop on over pop on over there's more counter strike to go good counter strike all day long we have na afterwards as well this is a packed day of qualifier counter strike i think uh is there is south america going on as well there was, at this um, time or asia Asian there's asia earlier, still going right? on no it's still happening Linvision is taking on the Mongols over on the C stream, so you can check that out as well. Uh, they're into the final to see who's going to go through to ESL Challenger Yonchi Ping. So everywhere you look, there's exciting Counter-Strike to watch. There's no reason to stop watching ever. Never leave your computer. Keep your eyes tuned to the stream, and we'll see you back in about two hours, ready for that banging matchup between NIP and Aurora. We'll find out who it's going to be when we come back from this extended break. Why did you say good? 
keep your picture in my room Cause it gets me in the mood You're still a free, free in my head You got me so confused My mind is full of you Still want you in my room Don't wanna get rid
give me all your love Come and meet me in the middle, babe And I give you all of my heart If I meet you in the middle, babe Would you give me all your love?
got me feeling some way like i might be stuck in a dream let's stay here till the day breaks feeling like i never want to leave keep moving till the sunrise you're taking my mind out to see fall in love at low tide i'm thinking we should never leave so Is it wrong me to think of you all the 
So you say you got a new one. I know that you're trying to believe that you can fake a whole scenario just to make me jealous. Your shadow keeps stalking, and we should stop talking. But we got that special something.
won't you come closer? Yeah, just come over.
everybody welcome back to the esl challenger yon shipping at 2024 close qualifier here for you we're close to the end we're getting our uh, our first grand finalist team here as we're gonna watch aurora take on nip in the upper bracket final and now alan uh the sparring has actually already started outside of the server i don't know if you've uh, been checking twitter but um aurora originally tweeted about an hour ago playing against can't afford simple uh, in 1930 CET, uh, and then NIP quote tweeted that with playing against we call cheats against anyone who beats us, even though we are just ass. Uh, so <laughs> little well, we little bit that. of org beef yeah. here apparently. The implication being that NIP went after Simple. I'm well, they they it. tweeted out ahead of announcing Wrinkle. They tweeted out the sentence number one in the name dot 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 as an ode to you know number one in the name number one in the game ah simple because social media managers are built to engagement bake not thinking about the fact that oh i don't know let's say we're going to announce our new exciting opera let's just build up the hype to think that we're getting simple first so that no matter who we announce next it's going to be a letdown like come on guys think with your brains i know engagements are shiny and that that's the biggest metric but like maybe don't put your young new prospect in a in a situation where your fans are going to be disappointed like maybe don't I mean, Device was running the one in his name when they signed him, I guess. But yeah, I'm, whatever. Can you imagine honestly. if they're like, we brought back Device, round two. That would be that would be the ultimate. That would be the Paid ultimate. Paid another million to, dollars. <laughs> not a B just yet. And then what was it the other way? Nip said, we don't it's need like to signing call out Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fair so enough. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if Aurora is calling cheats after this one. Uh, well, anyway, let's focus in on the match. The Twitter banter notwithstanding. We'll see who's actually going to be sharp in the server right now. We do have the veto between these two squads. Uh, NIP are going to take Ancient. Aurora pick Overpass. Decider, if we get to it, is Nuke. What do you think well, of this Well, at least Nip stopped picking Nuke. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Their, their Ancient was quite good when we saw it, so that feels nice. Um... Yeah, apart from that, I mean, the, the fact is, you know, we discussed this quite a lot already. We just don't really know anything about Nip's map pool. So, uh, be it them picking their own maps, be picking maps into them, it's, it's a bit of a turkey shoot. So, 
the ancient makes sense i think aurora's comfortable on overpass um nuke should we make it there will be very interesting because we've seen a real up and down display so far from nip on nuke um they beat blessed but the monty game was a disaster they lost was that earlier today yeah they lost already a game today to sampy on nuke as well um yeah we still got a lot of questions about that nuke i think and uh hopefully today it looks a little bit better we do indeed uh and speaking of questions as well this is our first chance to watch aurora since the result edition mm, he yeah. comes over so this team is now norvi alaki kinsey deco and result it's actually selters back out of this team and apparently playing for forza again so they did a little forza switcheroo they swapped out their forza player um and now we've got result here as part of the squad and he is the player who most impressed us individually um on the previous roster right this dude is a, is a menace this dude is a is an absolute menace in terms of mechanical skill and what he can do with the rifle yeah i think uh there's a lot of exciting prospects uh in both of these teams and for aurora this lineup should be their best yet i mean they they were peaking at they were pretty close to top 20 in the world at the end of last year but this lineup to me looks better um result really was a phenomenal player for forza at times um and i'm really intrigued to see what spots he plays actually because back in the day on forza when he first joined more of an anchor more of a supportive element as we saw with the later forza lineups result taking a more and more kind of high caliber middle of the map position especially on the ct side It'd be very interesting to see where he ends up here on aurora and i think i'd like to see them build around him and deco actually i think him and deco should be the stars of this team um so, yeah, that'd be interesting to see what spots they put him in because they just shove him straight into the, the spots they've opened up. I'm not actually sure that's the best use of Result. I think we saw at the end of Forza, Result, if he's given his space, is a monster. Yeah, he absolutely is. He absolutely can be. Um, the big question for me with this Aurora team as well is their approach seems to be packing as much young firepower talent as they can into the team, which is a strong matter. Good move. You know, if you can click everybody's head, uh, that's, that's going to be pretty nice. But it's about the overall picture, right? We've seen Aurora kind of all over the shop when we've watched them previously in terms of sometimes they look really put together. Sometimes they play like lunatics. Sometimes they're all over the place. Um, and so I am curious to see with the addition of Result uh, what this team actually looks like in terms of the macro, in terms of all five pieces, how mm -hmm. they're moving. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's take a look at the bracket just to get a check in on where we're at here as we are in our upper bracket final. Uh, yep. One of these teams will be through to the grand. Only one squad qualifies out of this qualifier, in it to Yan Ping itself. So there's still a long road to go. And down below, Metasport did triumph over Bless. So over on the B stream right now, Metasport and Monty are squaring up. Yeah, and of course, tomorrow we'll have that lower bracket final uh, with the loser of this upcoming series on the A stream. And then, of course, the grand final uh, tomorrow, uh, late afternoon here in Europe to uh, sort out who's going all the way. Well, not all the way. <laughs> not so far for these teams. To, uh, to Sweden, to uh, Dreamhack Summer, Jon Shipping. Um, I was mm. actually just checking Deco's stats because I seem to recall at the end of last year, he wasn't in the best form at the start of this year too. If you go on his stats, a bit of a dip as soon as CS2 starts. Not a huge surprise, I guess, given where the AWP was at. But he's back on the up now. Um, he's back more where you expect him as a player. So, just intrigued to see how that looks with the eye test on the server because, uh, you know, there's no, there's no doubting the skill of Deco. It's just... You know, he hasn't quite gone on the superstar trajectory. Maybe it felt like he was a year, a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's reasonable. I mean, I think you were the number one deck of a cheerleader for a while. And he almost lost you, but you've seen enough to get hey, you listen, back in. Hey, listen, Wrinkle now. This is the fun of this matchup, isn't it? Because Ooh. Wrinkle, listen, I've only seen him play a couple of series <laughs> ever. So my sample size is pretty small. But he was proactive. He was aggressive mechanically he's definitely in a good position so this is a hell of a, lit a litmus test for a very young player against someone like deco who is at least at this level of competition now years into the experience he's played years at a top 30 level so yeah for wrinkle uh, this should be a lot of fun kind of pairing them against each other so what we're hearing here is that this is deco and wrinkle fighting for your love yes it's how i like it done mike yeah Shorted in the coliseum okay. yes just Two, two young oppers brawling to yes. see who is going to keep Alan as their cheerleader. Only one can prevail. It's like the Highlander here. Uh, and we'll have to see who's going to be able to do so. But we're going to have to see a little bit of a break screen before we hop on into this match. Seems like we've got a bit of time. So we'll be right back.
when the match is ready to go. We'll see you then, folks. Off we go. Ooh, look, everybody's here on the right side of the map. This is gonna get spicy early. They wanna brawl, they're gonna get it. Maxter's gonna win it early on. Do they still check to play a big box though? Result hasn't peaked yet. Result. Oh, there's the execution. Trying to show up nicely for his new team. And so far, so good. Result. Risky maneuver there, letting them into the site, but he pays it off and now Alex. There's a lot of work to do if he's going to get this pissed around back into the realm of possibility. We're out body armor. So, eh, good luck. You know, just got to make it truly challenging for himself. There it goes. Oi! Uh, shot between the eyes and mm. down he tumbles. I guess nice credit, round for Result. Credit, I guess, as well to Lackey. I guess he made the call to stack A like that. Mm. Um, and Lackey actually, he has the harder job. He's the one taking first contact as well, at least after Deco's killed. So, great round from him. Of course, Result capitalizing a lot on his position. No bomb plant either, which is nice. Go to boots. fun how with all the changes in the you know, Aurora scene that we look at this say, oh, it's a brand new lineup. And then you just sit here for a second, you're like, uh, this is Forza from last year without Jerry. <laughs> That's the only difference with Ter without Jerry and with Deco. Um, oh my God, it is. Is this Wait. the same team? No, surely there was one other change. It wasn't Shelby was, in this it was, team. It was Jerry calling and it would have been uh, Forza or thing. That, that, that's the difference. Oh, of course, Fierce goes. Behind the squad, but... Hold on, going back to check. It was Kenzie, Norvi, Result, Zorte, and Jerry, I'm pretty sure. Start of last year. No, Norvi... Okay, no, it wasn't quite the same overlap. Result came in after Norvi and Kenzie left the roster. So it was Kenzie, Zorty, Norvi, Shelfie, Jerry. Ugh. And then Norvi and Kenzie came out of the roster. Krad and Result came in. It's ridiculous, isn't it? That was the timeline. But you're right. For a moment, I did have to question it. Pretty spicy. Boost up open smoke. Hold on. Oh, it gives it up. That's a bummer. They fixed the clipping bug. Boost bug not quite yet addressed. Lucky. Flex on the two. I actually suspect that's why they gave up that boost. You don't know until you hop on an opponent's head, but the way it works, folks, if you're not familiar with the boosting bug, is sometimes when you get boosted up, the player who's being boosted, their perspective is just like really jittery. And so they basically just can't aim. And that's just going to be that way all game. 
Oh, I do. It's Result? pretty bad. That's a tough one. Loses his jewel. So, sight might be handed over, but check out the bomb, and almost more importantly, Lackey, Lackey. is holding the entrance to Donuts. He's got to be wondering now as well, right? The gears are turning. He's like, why haven't oh. they planted? Yeah, well, that's why. He knew. Blue Phoenix, you got to entry in towards the site to make this happen. Now you need four more. Flashbang going to ruin his day. And the kill certainly will. Clean start. Clean start for Aurora. Very happy about that. Lucky, of course. Talisman, man at the helm. Who actually, got to be said, when Aurora were at their peak at the end of last year, he was a very... He's in great form. Especially on the T side, opening up a lot of rounds. Of course, being the in-game leader, he's always going to be in the pack on uh, at least the majority of the uh, occasions. He's doing good work, so... Yeah. Certainly, if Lackey's playing good Counter-Strike individually, this team becomes a pretty quite prospect. Yeah. Most definitely. And I mean, frankly, as well, right? He doesn't even really need to. <laughs> he just... As long as he's putting his teammates in positions to succeed, there's so much firepower on this team. They're going to be okay. Deco may be a little overzealous on the face there. Hold on. Okay. Sight lost. Tied up. Rez. Oh, the next kill. The flashbang time is four. Rez all caught his teammate. Bombs now down and ticking. What do you got for us, Wrinkle? Time for the Wrinkle show. Wrinkle and Rez all. New additions on point. <laughs> what? How does Rez oh, win no. that? How does he win I, that? I think... So Wrinkle didn't have armor. So when the Ugh. aim punch hit, his aim went wide. That's an insane Still. snap, though. Just a 90 degree... What? But he must be, you know what I mean, essentially pre-firing it. Yeah. He must be, yeah. There's That's no insane. time to adjust, then aim, then shoot. It has to just be everything in combination before you've even seen your opponent. That's wild. That is absolutely wild. Um, I'm a little bit stunned because Result didn't know that Wrinkle was out towards the long side of the back lanes. He didn't know. Oof. Monstrous. <laughs> well, if that is a uh, a tune of things to come, we're gonna love this song. Seems result is a anchor. I think he was the jag player for Forza towards the end. Fairly sure of that. So, for now, just been given more of an anchor position. Very passive stuff from NIP. Seeding control. They've got full nades, um, so they can go back in for that uh, mid control. That's what they're screwing up for at the moment. Util lined up. We are burning quite a lot of time here. Could be an issue later on. Smoke's coming over now. One for Jag. One for the Red Room. One for the deep left side of Donut. The nades in. And here comes the clear. A lot on Lackey. He's got no support. Oh, the flashbang out there. Uh, Why is he flashing from himself? Chief? Why is he flashing from himself? Uh, Would have been what he'd have to do. Grasshall's playing in the smoke. Did they overlook him? Oh, nope. Not anymore. They don't. But he does get his pound of flesh. He gets one. A second. Why? The nade's coming out. Oh, boy. Chaos on the server. Results kept this close. Time's becoming an issue. That bomb has to get out on Wrinkle. There's no second choice about it. He gets three dips, three swings at this, and eventually that pinata cracks and crumbles. Blue Phoenix has to keep his teammates safe. Kenzie has won his duel. It's all falling apart. They can't do anything about this. Aurora, too ferocious. The time to kill on some of these fights is so low. Result again. I mean, no pun intended, but... You know, Could have got that aura around him now where he just sometimes gets two or three kills. 
in positions where you think he's one and done for sure. Um, and that is the, that is star power in Counter Strike. Kind of breaking the rule book as it was, and results off to a great start. Aurora, obviously pretty good yet to drop a round. Economy though battered, bruised, and if you're NIP, that is the discussion in this timeout. Stay calm. Talked about this a lot in the series earlier. T side Counter Strike is an economic battle. If you break that cash, you can suddenly streak rounds together. And time for Alex to chime in. Of course, we know Wrinkles, you know, publicly announced yesterday. Blue Phoenix questions about his, his future in the lineup. Max has not been here for long. Got to imagine a lot of this has been called on the fly, guys. They can't fundamentally can't be that much practice with this five-man lineup. So pressure on Alex to uh, yeah, move the chess pieces while yeah. playing his own game individually, and that is harder said than done. Or easier said than done. As the saying goes, harder spoken than said. True that. I think we're going to get crunching towards mid on this one. And he tries his luck at the spam, but it's not going to connect just yet. Nip, she's smoke deployed. a real amount of nades for this control. One smoke left. That helps, though. That makes life a lot easier. Oh, the swing back in. Master punishes it. Blackie may be overzealous on this, but the push out from Result at least evens the numbers a bit. Master's got so much space, though. Oh, Norby just made a footstep. Master hears it. Back on the angle. He's got the shot. Even got Dink. Chancy will come in to clear it up. Still, Master's done so much. They're going to know he's pulled the B player off. That's why Alex is getting so aggressive. You can counter two back towards CT. It's just so unlikely there's anyone left here. I think they need to save. Deco can buy. Result can drop an M4. Yeah. It's too much to ask. Can't go back in for this one. And that will be the save. Um, massive entry from Wrinkle. As I was mm. saying, the, the util... They went for a site hit. It would have been... Dicey. Definitely would have been some avenues exposed. But Wrinkle just kills Deco. Opens up the map, forces rotations. Maxter gets another, takes the space in mid. And from there... Uh, the chessboard is NIPs to play with. And they call checkmate. Terrorists win. Blow one in the uh, wrinkle deco jewel. Mm. Keep your scorecards, guys. I wasn't. Was that the first engagement between the two of them? I guess we're both with ops. Yeah, I think in general, anyway, we're looking more at this as a holistic, you know, who has the more impact. Yeah. But it is fun when they go head-to-head -head directly. Are we going to get a panel of judges to rate their offering performance? So, included, what is happening here? Rez kills the second player in. He never saw them either. He was blind. He just knew the flashbangs on, the utility he was seeing. He's like, well... Oh, look at this read. Look at this call. There's no one here. Oh, my goodness. They get the site for free. What a reaction from NIP. Rez all stuck. Smoke on in. They can plant this bomb. There's nothing Aurora can do about this. This might just be a save. I. That's a stunning response. Just based on what Rez saw outside of Donut, they just... Or outside of uh, Cave, rather. They just instantly crawl up Donut. Mm. And they win the round. Yeah, well, they see nothing mid. Um, Rez, of course, is hearing a lot around him. He knows there's a player for either smoke, or at least some sort of shenanigans going down. And think about it from Aurora's perspective. In what world are you thinking, oh, we've just lost a player on B. We need to load up A and defend it. It's, you know, it's not how it works. So, mm. NIP. Strike fast, strike hard. And make it look easy. Aurora forced to save yet again. But at least they keep a lot of rifles going. That's the good news, I guess. Um, the bad news is that NIP have stabilized their economy a lot by keeping five alive. Yeah, and I, I just want to give a quick kudos. This calls back to your previous point. You know, Alex is kind of figuring this out on the fly a little bit. This is still a very new roster. It's hard to know exactly how much practice they've had as a five or even as a four. Um, 
that was that was an on the fly call, right? That was one piece of yeah. information, one kill through, and you're instantly into the site. And you're it's it's not just making that read or making that call; it's having everyone be on the same page for the communication right off of it. It's probably also the um, you know having Res as your extremity player is mm. a huge value to this team because Res is the only other person who, in my opinion, right now at the top professional level, can make decisive calls. Rez has played a lot of top tier ancient. He may have himself said, guys, there's a lot going on here on B. There's a window. Um, whereas if you had, you know, Maxter or Blue Phoenix, they might not have the experience to translate. Because it's not just the communication. You, quite often, you have to make a read off it too. It might not be enough for, for, for Rez to say, I can hear more B. It might be on Rez to say, they are taking B, guys. There can't be much, eh? Let's do something. But yeah, whoever made the final call. Combination. Fucking good. That is a beautiful base, man. I love it. Perfect. Oh Two for Lackey as they barge Three. their way through the smoke. Doesn't get better than this. really doesn't. Or he may be a little overzealous, but there's the flank gone, so Kinsey's going to keep it under control. And this would take something truly tremendous from Wrinkle. I would imagine he just hangs on to the off. If he can. But if he's really that guy, Alan. Something if he really like wants to... Going for a bit of damage. If he wants to win your love. Yes. He needs to get... Give me a highlight reel. I don't think your love's on his mind right now. Nope. Not yet. Not yet. At least. No. One more time. Neither is Deco. They're just both sitting passive. Come on, guys. Don't you want to win the Allen Hendricks sweepstakes? Get out of here for a minute. Let's go peeking. Does seem that way. Lackey plays a very aggressive brand of Counter Strike at the moment. Plays a lot of these positions where he's the one to get up in the face on both sides. Mm. And uh, yeah. And I'm not sure this he time... was that sort of player when he was on Entropic. Maybe my memory's a bit tarnished, but on that team, I think it always would have been Crad in that position. Not Lackey. Cred does like a little space taking. Still, you need to do it. And you'd imagine, especially in this roster again, where they've just got oodles of talent around him. There's a lot to be said for taking space and then seeing what your uh, what your players can do. With the young guns. What do we got here? A little bit of nade exchange outside, back in the spawn tunnel. Don't really know what that stuttering was about. Sorting out what they actually want to do in this round. Yeah, I think after the last one, I mean, they lose one player to a nade stack. And then Lackey gets two more as they come through the mid smoke. I'm not surprised they've gone for a more passive call. Two players to clear out the A tunnels. Now Alex is going to loop back. NIP with players outside of B doors. Um, let's see. They're going to go in dry, actually. Which is a bit of a this risk, a but fake. nobody can see anything for Aurora. They're completely blind. The A fake could be perfect. Tension drawn away. two players ahead of it. Oh, Blue Phoenix immediately dropped. They're going to realize that's not going to pull the rotator. They needed, like, one kill to really sell that. Instead, no one's pulled off of this defense. Wrinkle will find one, but it's a consolation frag. Alex is getting flanked. The A made push is here. He won't be expecting result. Not after contact hit on B. Alex is going to be shot in the side of the head. There's just nothing to do it about this. One. Oh, does he get the second? No. Wrinkle slips into cave. Wrinkle, though, cannot quite slip away. Nicely played. Nice setup from Aurora. I like the idea of the A fake. You just... Unfortunate for them that the op was posted so deep because Blue Phoenix is probably mm -hmm. just trying to take that first uh, sort of corner, push the player back a little bit, maybe throw some extra utility, some sort of a fake, and just gets deleted. Yeah, players are starting to make a move out of main or at least fretting that. 
Um, you can even you can actually see the second B player moved. Just as you've mentioned, it was just about enough confirmation for Aurora that it wasn't going to be A. That uh, they could reallocate forces. Okay. I don't mind the call though. I think I think Alex is is calling quite a very T side at the moment, doing his best. And another passive default, another two-man clear in towards A. So very similar opening in this round, and same as well for Aurora. They really like a B take. They like having this control. The uh, the fear is they've used all their util, so relying on crossfires and frags and rotations from here in this round, really. Smokes lined up. Here we go again. It's going to be the mid clear. Three smokes. Exactly the same as what we saw earlier. And here they come for some control. Speaking of control. Norvi's guy. Mid conceded. But look at this now. Norvi's going active on the flank. Going to go around the world. This allows his teammates to rotate off. They know exactly what's coming through. Oh, Lackey's actually pushing in towards A main. This is a little old, perhaps. I don't know where he thought they were. I guess he thought all five maybe were in Donut. But trying to take the isolated fight out there, that might be a, a bit overambitious. Smoke's going to be down. Bomb will be planted. Flank player's a bit late. That tag, though. Aggravating onto Alex. See what they can cook here. Alex is lost. Wrinkle though connecting. And here comes Blue Phoenix out of main. Wrinkle and Blue Phoenix chiming in. And Norvi opted to go yep. the long way around. And now he's going to go into the save. Norvi could just never get engaged. He was the player that flanked very early on through B. Hmm. It felt like Aurora had all the info. It did. They killed Rez outside of B. And then, was it was it Lackey? It was Lackey, wasn't it? The push. It was, yeah. The A main push cost them. Yeah, I think I just feel like him and Result weren't on the same page. Like if they both played retake, the fear is they've lost Donut, right? So mm. you can't play on the site. You can either play aggressively in towards the tunnels, or you play from Temple and CT. And uh, yeah. They just weren't quite in the same place at the same time. Of course, result, he might not have a tremendous amount of practice with, with Lackey as a site partner. Maybe to be expected. But uh, all good news for NIP. They get up to three. Money is really bad for Aurora, so there's ample opportunity here to make it small rounds. IP during this half is those rounds have just become so segregated, so far between that they can never break the money. Now would be a good time to right that wrong. Five players here towards the B side of the map. Wrinkle goes for a quick check, but uh, all their eggs are in this B basket. They'll have to commit in this direction. Jag retake is perfect. All the sting taken out of this B hit. What do you do now if you're NIP? Pray. Pray to wrinkle. Oh, Blue Phoenix might be answering their prayers here. Two found. Okay. All right. Turn this on its head. I think there was even an, an engagement here with Kenzie, so they know where he's at. They've got the information. Blue Phoenix being that guy right now. Bomb down. Plant through. They start to contend with Cave. Oh, Maxter cleared out. Makes this tougher. Wrinkle and Blue Phoenix. Who's going to deliver for them? Jiggle. Aha! He's around in towards Cave. Blue Phoenix down. Couldn't move off the pillar. He felt, but time is becoming an issue. They don't have kits. They don't have kits. This has to be the smoke and stick. He's ahead of the Molotov as well. Those are not on the bomb. Do they have time? Do they have time? They do. Yeah, yeah, he's got a kit. They do. Recovery will be good. Wrinkle couldn't land the killing blows. And so Aurora, keep this going. Still got to give some credit to Blue Phoenix. That was... A phenomenal pair of entries as he ran up the ramp. But Aurora hold firm. It's the last of the half, so of course NIP will be buying. They're taking this pause to sort it out because what nades are going to need, Alex? 
What nades do we need to call off the set round? And then a lot of these, you know, give mid, give B, late retake into those areas. And you need a lot of util to do that. So I think they'll need to prioritize the nades. Maxter might need to take a, a Mac 10 or something of the sorts. And result continues his onslaught. 12 to 3 now. Hmm. We were billing this as Deco versus Wrinkle. Might be result versus everybody. Guy is nuts. That's a heavyweight bout. Kenzie wants to get aggressive. Spam by the cave. Ooh, it's effective this time. This is what it's for. It's for this ramp rush. Deco does connect on the first. Blue Phoenix out of play. He's been a difference maker for them. And oh, the lineup, the knockdown. It's over. Alex, what do you got for us? Oh, Alex is cooking. Chef's in the kitchen. Chef's in the kitchen. And he's serving up headshots. But he's got to reload. The cupboard is bare. And it's nine rounds for Aurora at the half. Back into the server here. Aurora commanding lead off of that first half, Alan. What did you see? Result. <laughs> and a lot of it. Norby was alright, but result has my heart. He brings the results, as his name would suggest. Seems like Aurora's got the right call for this one. 
It's another A pistol. This time, though, uh, there's not a lot to receive them from NIP. Blue Phoenix. Be in trouble. Kenzie might get run down here. He does indeed. Now they know. Now the jig is up. Blue Phoenix is trying to stay alive to keep the advantage into the retake, but the retake, it will be. Bomb that cannot deny. Heavy donut defense here. NIP mostly going to be flooding in from CT. So this donut could be a problem. They got to smoke. That's just been thrown. That's covering off donuts. So through they go. Aurora want the brawl. They do not want to get sectioned off. And into the action they go. Master first one dropped. Rez trades it. But it's looking good for Aurora. And it'll all go their way. Such an important call, isn't it? To disrespect that smoke and get in front of it. Uh, Deco too, we weren't on board, but he got two kills there in Temple. And he's on his lonesome. And that helps as well. This map is looking done and dusted. This is NIP's map pick. We have no idea what they're going to present for us on Overpass. Frankly, you can even do Aurora. We just know that it's a solid map for Aurora. Okay. Well, pause is in. Last time out for NIP. And I think... I mean, pick your poison, save here, get M4s out next, buy here, and should you win it, at least you've got a little bit more wiggle room. And they're going to buy here. The lesser of two evils. MP9's out. But there's not going to be a lot of util for this defense. And given the pause, I think Aurora are going to be wise to the likelihood of a force buy, aren't they? Hardly going to be a surprise after, after the attack pause comes in. So let's see. That's a nice HE. Not as nice as it looked on the mini-map. Nicer kill for Kenzie though. It does cost him a lot of health. Maybe a bit frail going forward. But there may not be much forward to go through. Norby lost. Kenzie dueling. Gets body shot down. And they're going to hold on to Cave. This is now a much more difficult prospect. Yes, they've got the gun advantage, but not the numbers. So the bomb's making its way over. They need to do more work. And Lackey trying to do so. Not going to be able to hack it. Deco does not fancy his chances anymore. Trying to back off this. But as they peek back in, that's what he was waiting for. Oh, <laughs> what a shot from Rezal. Thought Wrinkle should have had him dead to a race, but my goodness. That was an assassination. 1v1 here. Deco planting it. No, he's got the time before Alex can get out. Bam. Attempted. Not connecting. Back the other way a little bit more so. And one bullet to the elbow will be enough. Alex gone. Around one. Aurora close to a conclusion. I mean, it's expensive, but it doesn't matter, does it? We're so close now to the finish line. That was... Uh, that wasn't a force buy to do economic damage for NIP. That was to turn the game around and... No bueno. They're going to force up again. No surprises. You can't hand Aurora nine map points. That is far too much. Okay. Well, they got a bit, a bit more util this time, but... Uh, I'm not feeling very positive. I already love this new Aurora team. You bring in Result. If he's going to be one of the best players on the team, the team is such a different prospect. Mm. It's true. No, no, no disrespect to their previous players filling such a position, but Result is... Result's one of the hottest prospects in his region right now. Well, that's... This is a region that includes Relative Donk. to his roles. Okay. I was going to say, this is a region that just keeps, like, spitting out talented prospects. Of course. Actually, insane, the talent we have coming from the region right now. But you're right. Result is a, a game changer for this team. They are very fortunate to get him from Forza. He could play on Spirit, and they'd be a better team. He could play on Virtus Pro, and they'd be a better team. 
Interesting. Who are you taking out on Spirit? This round doesn't seem to be live, but also there's been damage done. I mean, it might be heinous to say, but it probably be magics. Hmm. Uh... There's been damage done. I think we're live. It, I think we're live as well, but I Aurora don't think Aurora should definitely think continue we're live. playing. Um, it's not going to make a difference to an admin decision now. A lot of communication. They're rooting back towards B, so uh, that's at least... Okay. <laughs> oh, it is, in fact, getting reset. All right, cool. Was that damage done? Maybe it was self damage but that still shouldn't matter i i don't know i don't know maybe it was done afterwards we were discussing result but we have yeah, had I a do, player drop it I is think, result yeah i think even the um i know the rule book strictly says damage but i think that only come into force if nip disputed so nip themselves might have said okay no nobody's dead this let's stop this and then it's probably okay. sure yeah um, okay Well, we hope this is sorted soon. I believe our heads are going to reappear. To um... So what we're learning from this game so far is that we thought this was going to be a battle between Deco and Wrinkle for your love, but somehow Results run away with it. <laughs> for now. For now, Blue Phoenix is, uh, is having a good crack. Um... He's good, dude. He is really showing. I think he's making it very tough for them to not include him in this team. I think that's what I've learned over the course of this qualifier. I don't think their intention is to necessarily include him in this team. I have literally no insider knowledge. want to specify that. I'm just pure speculation here. Um, but I think that in his time standing in for this roster, he's making a compelling case for them to keep him. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Well, I'm not in NIP, but I imagine they're targeting players at the moment. Um, and it's not... It's not that Blue Phoenix is a bad player. It's that he's kind of, if he joins the team, he takes up a slot that could be available to a more tenured world-class player. That, that for me, is the question mark here. Is that not that Blue Phoenix is bad? Is that maybe they could get, um, you know, someone to lead them forwards? They also, if you're going to have Wrinkle and Maxter, you might want another really experienced player um, to round out the squad. But yeah, I mean, certainly in terms of his career and his future said it yesterday every good game he plays in the full nip lineup is a uh, another great appraisal for him as an individual and could do him a lot of good moving forwards and i mean when you're talking about roster construction you've got oodles of experience between alex and rez you've also got exist in the coaching so there is a lot of veterancy in those three um i do wonder nip is kind of in an interesting spot with attracting talent as well where the last few rosters have really sullied their reputation for developing and displaying prospects and talent and teams, right? Almost feels like, you know, mm -hmm. growing some young talent might help restore that. Speaking of restoring things, uh, NIP might want to quickly restore some control of the A-side because look at this. They got no one. No one even close to them. Well, I don't think saving is, is going to be an option, is it? They need to fight for this. Yeah, yeah, you don't really want to be rocking into the last round with the CZ. Blue Phoenix, what a flashbang off! Oh my goodness! The SMGs can't follow it up. But Blue Phoenix, he's giving them a beachhead to fight from, and now Alex is battling them back into the sea. Look at the health remaining on Deco and Kenzie. This CZ might as well be an auto sniper. He's, just, he's hit him with the fucking smoke! He's hit him with the smoke! Oh no! It all falls to the dang CZ! Alright. Come on, Rez. You've got an MP9. This should be enough. This should be enough. The bomb is down. 50 seconds. They're so low. I don't know if this is confirmed damage. But that guy at this point is riding around to make sure they're not getting flanked. They seem to have lost track of Rez. And I think Rez is wise in his favor. tricks. He knows they can't run all the way around. Stick to your guns, brother. He's committing. And the guns are going to find him. So close off of this. So close off of this retake. I thought Blue Phoenix had done it for them. Yeah. But it's not to be. And I'd be at a huge advantage there. Uh, it's just Deco. Deco saves them. Two players, red HP, and Deco saves them. Um, that looked like a, a catastrophe. Once that flash came over, Blue Phoenix gets the kills. It's, it's a nightmare. But Aurora... 
and we saw it earlier with, with Result, the the star power gives you, you know, it bails you out a few rounds of a, a map, doesn't it? And when you add in the solid gun rounds from Aurora, you get this sort of scoreline where it's just formidable. This one oh, follow up as well wrinkle trying to make it happen but you can only do so much this one seems like a pretty heavy lean uh, alex though silences the young gun of deco <laughs> wrestle's not making any secret of this blue phoenix just holding him at bay and all right nicely done from blue phoenix we're not done just yet it was looking dire it was looking disastrous and now suddenly it's looking like lackey is alone no bomb control, no round control, no survival. Would lackadaisical be the right word for a roaring yeah. that round? Yeah, I kind of let right. off the gas. It's also result is chasing and lackey. If they buddy systemed, Blue Phoenix is dead. Um, but they weren't joined at the hip. And they don't have the money to brunt a loss. They doesn't have the fully force, so... There's absolutely scope for the NIP to make this more compelling. Still, though, eight rounds on the trot required. And this is going to be very dangerous on these lower buys. Blue Phoenix is a madman, and he makes it work. <laughs> oh, the fact that they both... I mean, that's a, that's a coordinated call between the two players, right? They're both going out through the smoke. I will say, in terms of chemistry between Blue Phoenix and Master, these are two players from the Young Ninja, so they've been playing together for, I think, at least a year now. Maybe not yeah. quite. It's a bit like Big, isn't it, when they brought up their academy players? It just smooth in these periods, these interim lineups, you know, particularly for Big, they had the health problems with people like Favon. It just smooths it over a bit more, doesn't it? And you're still competitive. Yeah. You're still competitive at a top level because you have people that are already somewhat in the system. Week. Deco gives him a foot. Old toe. Old toe bean. I guess some credit to whoever you know built those NIP Academy teams because don't forget the Meta Sport essentially is a collection of players from that system as well. True. And Maybe uh, should have had uh, more playing, faith in their own talent right scouting. Now, aren't they? I believe so. Yep. Over in the lower. Give him onto a good game. Goodbye, Result. Goodbye, Result. Does Wrinkle finally get an op now? Drop your rifle over to Rez. Blue Phoenix buys you an op. Come on. No. Blue Phoenix has dropped the gun instead. Why mm. have they done this? Like Wrinkle could have finally had a CT side op. What's the, the best way back into this is all guns blazing. This one, though, is a full eco. Bit of util. Let's go for a plant. Economic damage doesn't matter anymore. Um, is there anything that matters is Aurora gets more money for their own buy. And, uh... Not looking good. Now it's looking better. Madman! He sprints through the molly! To make sure that's not going to get out of hand. But good that he did. Good that he did, because the site couldn't hold. Now here we go. Still a very long road back into this, and we're going to have a buy. They're half They're going to half buy. This. They're going to half buy. No way. Interesting. Is it because Lucky's got the got up, up? I'm really surprised by this. And they must have a set call in mind. Mm. It's the only explanation. The uh, the early lurk smoke, the one we've seen since the CS2 transition comes in. And I think it's going to pop in behind this. I would imagine. Smoke blocks off Maxter on the window peak. This is what he wanted for. Here they go. Here comes the util. There's the flashes. Dodged nicely, nimbly by Rez. Beautiful. Just turns. Snaps back. Easy kill. Losing Cave makes this tougher. And losing Rez makes this a bomb plant. Unless... What is Norvi doing? What is Norvi doing? Brother, you have the bomb. Norvi. It's going to work out. Are they going to take this A? Are they going to take this, eh? Oh my god, these lunatics. These actual lunatics. NIP's realizing it. 
They needed Deku to get that kill. That's not going to happen, but the bomb's going to be planted. It's not on the site we expected. They had full control, Alan. They had full control. And they leave. Now let's see what Norvi can do. What can he cook on this smoke fade? Sh should be no way. Both rifles are pointed his way. Well, apparently a pistol and a rifle. And he's come in to clear temple. He's found this ground. He's found this space. You can expect him, Donut. They don't know which way to look. Kid on Blue Phoenix. Smoke to cover off this bomb. Blue Phoenix getting on the tap. I'll just a spam here. Oh, he's down. He's done. Alex has to stick and the bullet will find him and that's how it ends. Northy dipping, diving, dodging. A bailout to the other site and Aurora take the dub on Ancient. That was a half buy. That was a half buy. <laughs> half buy where they had B. Oh my god. I can't really explain it. Maybe they... I wonder if they heard... I think it's Blue Phoenix went into the long smoke. I wonder if they're really scared of players flashing through when they tap the bomb. I don't see any other explanation for what we just see. Um, interesting. Well, uh, shenanigans at the end of side. That was an incredible display from Aurora. They barely put a foot wrong. Result obviously looking brilliant. Still very early on in this team. Deco having good map as well. It's hard to fault them. Where's the where's the hole in Aurora? I watched that game on NIP's map pick, a map we've seen them look pretty good earlier in this qualifier. And I question, is anybody close to the caliber to beat Aurora and deny them the spot at LAN? I'm not sure anybody is right now. Doesn't feel that way. Doesn't feel that way. We're headed to Overpass next. I don't believe we've seen NIP play this yet with this particular iteration. Uh, and it's a map that Aurora do quite like. So that's going to be interesting to see what they can do when we come back from this break.
wherever I go. Welcome back. We're ready for map number two here between Aurora and NIP, and that was pretty dominant from Aurora. Ancient, uh, well handled pretty much all the way through. A couple moments for NIP, but nothing more. And that was NIP's map pick. Now we're headed to Overpass, a map that I don't think we've seen this new roster play yet. And Aurora, meanwhile, they like a bit of Overpass. It just feels like there's no reason to doubt them going into this map. One of their favorites on a five win streak. Uh, at the moment as well it's all looking good for aurora and i don't know man i just i just i just feel like nip are not ready to play a team of aurora's caliber i mean nip have some good players wrinkle looks like a good signing but aurora even with the one player change they just they just feel like such a solid unit i i, I really struggle to see where nip is going to find an advantage going forward in this series yeah yeah, it does feel that way. Um, we're going to need to see the individuals, I think, step up, right? I don't even know that they necessarily had the opportunity. It didn't feel like we had any glaring individual errors. We had some big moments, really from Blue Phoenix above anybody else. Rez had a couple moments as well. Um, but it just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to outdo what we were getting from Aurora. Aurora were pushing the envelope. We're getting aggressive. We're getting in their face. You had some crazy plays from Result. You had some crazy rotations, things that we're, you know, wondering how on earth are they even making that call, and yet it's working out. Um, and those are exactly the kind of plays that can work for them on overpass, right? They're going to start on this T side, but as we've seen with Aurora in the past, the T side's hardly something to slow them down. Most teams, you, you don't fancy your chances on the attacking half of overpass, but I feel like this Aurora squad just you can get your face right off the rip and not try and let off the gas pedal. Yeah, and I think especially in this sort of matchup where NIP is at the moment, their comms have got a bit of work to do that's going to make them indecisive. That is not a problem for Aurora. No. Quite the opposite. They are going to take every inch they are given. And what have we got happening in this round? NIP, perfect time to have four on location. As I say that, Alex runs off, as does Maxter. So maybe just the read on the initial rush, if it was going to come through. Bit more reasonable on this exchange, but Rez has still potted, spotted a body. That might drive him down. Two players now spotted. Yeah, here start the rotations. And... I guess going right. to let Kenzie work before committing. That is move. not good. That is not good. What well, is if you're an NIP fan? Bomb now down as well. Kenzie's going to try and secure this site solo dolo. I think Wrinkle might have just spotted him. Hard to tell with the X-ray there. He's certainly not behaving as if he knows there's a player right here. Oh, but Wrinkle will win the duel. And so the bailout strategy is not available either. Bombs now dropped in their vision. It just falls to a very wounded result. Broken wing. We'll see if he can fly this one home. Should be no way. Should be no possibility. He has to peek into their sight lines. He'll find the first, the second. Oh, say it ain't so. Say he can't do this. And he'll give you a way in. Alex doesn't want to face. He's heard these footsteps. He'll try and peek off of his teammate. They just need body shots. And eventually those do come through. Hmm. Well, Roy didn't know how good they got it. 
It's only two on B for a lot of that round, but they never committed. Um, and all good for NIP. No bomb plan either. So this force by doesn't have a lot of sting to it. Deegs across the board. Well, we know some of these players can be dangerous, but... Um, NIP absolutely at the advantage. Early nades dispersed as Wrinkle gives ground. And both of the rifles are here on A, so... They're very happy to play the range game. Long. This is a space given to the Max just rotating up to deal with it, but okay, they go into the bathrooms. I was gonna say if they just rocked out long, there's actually a chance for this to round to get real weird. As it is, we're gonna have the bathrooms fight. Bathrooms fight one. Can Rez get away? Ooh, has to go to the side arm. Rez! Continuing to deliver though. And Maxer can clean up the rest. Nicely played from Rez. Had to mm. stall for as long as possible, and he did exactly that. Especially after Wrinkle goes down without a frag himself. Yeah, a lot there was on Rez. That could have dominoed and cascaded very quickly into a bomb plant. But he stands firm. And seeing as there was no bomb plant, I don't think Aurora can justify a force up again. No, they can't. It's just a few pistols. Armor on result. That's all we're going to see. Opportunity then for NIP to find some cash. Of course, given the way that Ancient went, it'd be nice to have a bit of a respite, feeling control. Never really got that feeling on map one in this series. So far, they are en route to keep this very clean. Them, mister. They've kept it squeaky, spotless. Even trying to get all the deegs out of the round, they can't do it. But it's a nice way to start mm. your CT side, get the money going, wash out all those thoughts of ancient as well, right? You know, this is just get things flowing nicely here. Indeed. That's a quick reminder winner of this game into the grand final, plays for the spot. At Challenger Yon Shipping, uh, Dreamhack Summer. Loser plays the winner of Monty Metasport, our concurrent game on the B stream. Monty are a map to the good. They just won Metis Pick's port, uh, pick. Uh, and they're going on to Anubis now, which, as we know, uh, Monty's always liked a bit of that. Leaks res. Trades there though. Wrinkle fast onto it. And Maxter now raining down bullets. Res off a little bit careless in that clear, and it's gonna cost them. Complete unconfirmed damage on Blue Phoenix. Can't really do anything with that information. Man advantage and NIP will give ground to try and stall this out a little bit. They still got a Molly, some flashes. Util's not great. But it's something at least for Wrinkle to operate with. So they're going to leave him alone, stationed up towards A. Yeah, how are they going to play this on B? For now, they're doing a boost back site. They've got... Where's Blue Phoenix? Okay, he's in the pit. I think I'm on the bridge. It's a fake. Yeah, it's good though. It might hold these players even longer. Molly goes down onto front toilets. Ever so important the wrinkle doesn't just die. That's when this round becomes very scary for an IP. Well, he won't just die. Gets the kill, stays alive. 
doing everything you could possibly ask. And I mean, at this point, there's just no time. He stalled out the clock. That's very nice he played from Wrinkle. I mean, really didn't even have to do that much on the fragging, but he does it as well. Never getting into this game at the moment, our Aurora. A little concerning there for Aurora as well. I don't think even if they had killed Wrinkle, they had enough time left on the clock to plant. Certainly was cutting it close. Don't leave any uh, any leeway. This is weird. You have three players, or two players all the way in. Three players half a foot out. Yeah, well, the two saved. True. That's, so I don't, yes. I did, uh, but equally, that is how that works. But equally, right. should the other guys have bought nades and sort of win? This is not a good start. This will do bad things to their economy even in the following round without a bomb plant. And it looks like Alex is about to find the C4 on the ground. Yes, he has. Well... That's gonna suck. Oh, Rezal's about to be a very frustrated boy. Alex held on for just a moment there to see if he could get more. But now what do you do? Rez has pushed long as well. He's in playground. You basically swap sides with the CTs. Kenzie dead. Oh, hey. Okay, he does actually get the kill. That was um, almost a blunder. How does... Is that a ding through the wall? On Therese? Yeah, that was, a, that was a deagle. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how. But either way, I mean, they literally don't even have time anymore. Even if they'd killed Alex, they won't kill Alex. It stays clean for NIP. That's another round where Aurora just get absolutely nothing out of it. We're now 5-0. Maxter and Alex haven't died yet. Uh, this is, this need is a pretty pause. primo. They need a pause just to relax. You know, we were wondering how NIP would approach this map, being as they hadn't played it yet with this roster. Um, turns out, maybe well. I want to see what happens when they stop getting the opening kill. That's what I want to see. A lot of that so far. Here's the boost. Four on B for NIP. Lackey, the man charged. We're taking the short water control. No jewels to be found. Wrinkle's going to walk in. Mm. I wonder if they heard the orb scope. Because Lackey's being passive. There's a lot of space being taken at the same time over towards A. And he peeks out. Oh, beautiful double kill for Lackey. Defense in Tassas. And I think if you're NIP, you've already got to start thinking, do we stack? Do we get aggressive? What is our best route to recovering this round? Alex under pressure. He's so low though. Yeah, just a quick body shot will do it. So Lackey just trying to do something alone, but... Oh, <laughs> right, Deco. Hell of a haircut to give out. It's got to be Maxter. Maxter of boss. It's the two immortals left. Maxter and Alex haven't died, but this is their toughest task. I can't deny this bomb. He's playing in the smoke. Trying to make a cheeky play, and right now Alex is attempting to sell it. Alex has got Ken C making an individual push in the bank. That makes this easier. Just around the dice box. There's the peak. There's the check. Now into the 2v2. They've got a kid as well on Alex. Smoke go too wide? No. Oh my goodness. Alex can just get on this. Deco, what are you going to do? He's tapped. Did Deco hear this? He's got the kill. He's got the transfer. Nicely done from Deco. The two unkillable players laid low. And Aurora on the board. Still though, the damage is, is ruinous. There's going to be players on Galil's here for Aurora. Very good attempt from those remaining NIP players. And Aurora are far from out of the woods. Another goodbye now for NIP. 
And there's another in the can too. That's how clean these rounds were. And that felt labored for Aurora to get that round over the line after having a huge advantage in the bomb plant. Either way, round seven. Here we go again. Blue Phoenix, aggressive. Util behind him and a result. Too late to trade. Too late to trade. Gets tagged up for his trouble. Two-man advantage now for NIP. They're right back on it. Yeah, what a way to respond. What a way to respond. Aurora's thinking maybe we can get some momentum. Anything but. These T-side rounds can be so tough to come by on overpass. Unicorns almost. Norvies AK. Illustrating a point nicely for me. A wrinkle. <laughs> Absolutely deleted. All right. The Unicorn AK. Pierce is through. Hang on now. This isn't done just yet. This isn't done. Res, position known. Kenzie's got the bomb. You can't be fighting, Kenzie. You really can't be fighting, Kenzie. Will, in fact, punch the numbers in. How did Novi get that fight? He went over the smoke, I believe. And uh, Blue Phoenix will eventually get him, but Kenzie jumps down after. These guys are lunatics. They are madmen. And Blue Phoenix never even wanted to get involved. Have we actually, had a DC in the middle of this? He DC'd, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That might have actually been quite early in the round. He was pushed out a monster when he disconnected. That makes a lot more sense. Was wondering why he hadn't come along with his teammates. And uh, yeah, that now tells the tale. It's unfortunate because Rez, by virtue of her having long, he was making it roar so uncomfortable. That's why Norby gets aggressive. Hmm. Well, that sucks for NIP if it did truly have a huge impact on the round. Uh, no pauses, so I guess we're straight back into it. Attack timeout is in. Economy wavering. This buy is still very good for NIP. No complaints. But they're running out of tether. And they haven't saved many guns either. None at all. On these last couple. Hmm. Of course, I guess a big question mark around this team is uh, exist as a coach. How does it operate? What's the uh, True. the dynamic like with Alex? Who's making what decisions? Um, yeah. What's the bleed It was interesting. Like? I mean, looking at them in Heroic, right? He was in Heroic for a long time. There was a dynamic established between him and Katie. And, I mean, Exist is not exactly a raw rock guy. Anyone who has ever met Exist or seen an interview with Exist or just looked at his face in player photos from his time competing will know Exist is not a raw rock guy. Man's face barely changes expression. He's a mind for the game, though. 100% absolutely. Getting in there. Coming up with sets, structuring the team. That's where he's going to have his fingerprints all over what this roster's doing. I think particularly with Heroic, it was his experience deep in tournaments that made him attractive yeah. to that team. This is a different ball game of NIP. This is more rebuilding from scratch. Um, but certainly, needless to say, Exist has gleaned a lot of lessons from the various teams he's played in over the years. NIP, yeah. Fnatic, FaZe briefly, stints elsewhere too. Very useful now. Wrinkle collects. And Kenzie was the only player on the A side of the map. Aurora kind of funneled into this B hit now. They signed up. Here we go. Huh. March 2018 to May 2018. I've totally blacked out that period of Exist's career. Bodies are on. This is the last bit of utility for Aurora as well. Oh, Alex. What a cheeky play. Nearly pays off, but 25 seconds left. Everybody's here. His stall might have just been enough. Planting the bomb is a tough ask. You certainly can't leave. It's just got to be a brawl for control. 15 seconds to do it in. You got to go. You got to fight, Aurora. There's just no other choice. There's no other option. Getting the kills. They're getting the kills, but it's all about this clock. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Deny that bomb and it's over, but no. Can't be done. Result keeps them going. 15 points of health 
on two players. All that stands between Aurora and Oblivion. This is such a different game to Ancient, isn't it? Ancient. Ancient was a steamrolling. Whereas here, Aurora having to fight so hard for these rounds. But they've done it. They finally brought this economy in check. And what is the call from NIP? Uh, really? I don't like this. I don't like this. This is too much. They didn't need to full force here. And they can pay a heavy price. They don't have a lot of util. They've already burned a lot of it. Trying to put up an initial defense. Kenzie does need a bit of help, though. The only player out of on the site proper. These bodies are flying in. It's absolute carnage. What is going on? One on one situation. Bomb no, out in the open. They it. could do the oh, job. And no. yes, it does. Jesus Christ. The number of damaging nades <laughs> that flew into that pit. <laughs> Poor Blue Phoenix. Uh, you're hoping it's just going to be an honorable duel. First bullet wins. And then just a nade over the railing. This has now been a four-round slide, though, for NIP. Timo's coming in here. This is their second one deployed. I mean, they've got to fix something quickly. They're getting these rounds so close. Everything's been a slog, but Aurora have gotten four in a row. And the beauty of the T side is you really do not have to care how you win them. You just have to win them. What do you talk about here when you just had the timeout not so not long ago? I mean, it's I your first official with this squad you, on this map. I guarantee you one of them has asked, why did we buy in the last round? And... Mm. Um, They're buying again. They're buying again. Why? They are, um, in the Am words of Marshawn Lynch... Here, they're, they're, they're not on T-side. Uh, in the words of Marshawn Lynch, they are all about that action, boss. They're going to get them. They're going to get theirs more than they get got, though. But if Aurora keep planting, they're on T-side. You can't full reset them. But they do have the opener here. They do have an AK found. Maxter, by the way, having a phenomenal map. Yeah. He's, of course, been a little bit in Wrinkle Shadow, but he's had a great kind of opening. Uh, he's played a couple games, but, you know, this is his first extended event, I guess, of NIP. Yeah, At he's been... The, thing, of course. the reason we're not giving him as much of a spotlight as we've been giving Wrinkle is he had been playing as part of this roster for a while, as part of the young ninjas that moved up. And then they just announced that he's in it. I'll look at the opening kill stats because it feels pretty heavy NIP right now to me. 45 seconds is going to be a B take. It's about even. Thirty-five seconds. Alex has just gone through the monster smoke. Ah, uh, well, that's bomb confirmation. They're gonna rotate down now. Thirty seconds. He could bail up through Khan. They're gonna bail up through Khan. Realizing that the jig is up, that they've been rumbled, coming towards the other side of the map, and now Wrinkle is alone. Just a scout to his name right now. He wants to go out and peek and fight and give himself a chance to shoot. He needs teammates. Whoa! Or not? What a shot from Wrinkle! The info checking. Now a double man advantage. Rez. Bit overzealous in the retake. And no kits. And no smoke. If Aurora can fall back to toilets, this is so difficult to retake. But instead, they're going to fight. First goes the way of Lackey. He picks out from default. It's awkward, but he finds the frag. And now, so difficult. Double peek is through. And Aurora make it work. That's going to be... That's... Mm, that's going to haunt them. That round's going to haunt NIP. You have a 4v2. The, the shot hits. Concede the bomb plant. Let it go. First player through the smoke. I think it was Rez, actually, which not normally the player would expect to make that move. It's not on the same page as the rest of his teammates on that retake. I guess he felt Trying the time was just ground. so low that I'm just going to go for this and try and fight it. But uh, yeah, you're right. If they just played that together, it's on a much better chance. We're gonna... If this half slips to Aurora, 
we need to ask some serious questions about NIP's buy choices because they've played so many rounds without a full investment, without an AWP on Wrinkle, without the Molotovs, without a kit, crucially, as well. Hmm. I'm less than convinced this is a good idea. Alex has money for a kit and he hasn't bought one. Hmm. If you don't let the plants, you don't need a kit. But, uh, uh, philosophy hasn't exactly been working for them for the last five, so. Oh, smoke up. Always a risk. A massive risk at that, and this time Maxter's head is removed, so open and kill lost. Your big firepower piece out of the server. And Wrinkle's bailing, they're gonna gamble at full B. Yeah, can't blame him. Deco's pushed into toilets. Uh, if he carries on forward, he'll have an easy read. Equally, if Lackey sees more than one player, this round is gonna end a very fast. Where's the call? Why's the bomb running B? It was all the way back in steps. So now there's I know, to be but Kenzie, Kenzie shouldn't be anywhere near this. No. Get over, get back towards A. Oh, he's coming. Missed. Oh, no, they're Molly for the top of connector. This is so slow from Aurora. Crawling pace now up the bank goes everybody. Oh, that nade. Oh, they're able to back away from it. Takes an unfortunate bounce. Calm down. Blue Phoenix. Oh, great play off the flashbang. Kenzie stuck here on dice. There's the trade. It's all under Deco now. Hasn't been able to fall away, but he'll get behind the aircon. Deco. What do you got? You knock off the round. So, by the tips of their fingers, just barely, NIP managed to keep this one going. Another round that comes down to the wire. But six, at least confirmed. I'm still a bit confused. I feel like... When Lackey gets a kill, sees more B, the round should be over. That's the information that Aurora needed. But somehow they lost another player in Connector. Kenzie takes forever to get the bomb to A. I don't know why he was running towards B ever there. Um, yeah, a little bit perplexing from Aurora. It gives NIP a window. Okay then, round 12. Another 4B round from NIP. Rez on his lonesome. Towards Connecto for his sake, he doesn't get isolated. Cheeky boost here. Of course, we had the double man set up uh, earlier from Wrinkle and Rez. And... But, um, that's not a possibility. B take is through. Lackey hears all of this, so be wise to those tricks. Mm. I think, did Rez just spot a hint of a pixel here? No, must have just missed him. Slipped into the bathrooms. Yeah, now got a lot of forward ground. Rez has got a good flank, but which way does he go? Yeah, and the question is when does he hit the timing? Now he hears, but uh, it's just not going to be here in time. They've lost both. Player party. He's been hurt. Oh, Lackey, that's a fumble. That's a fumble that's going to allow this retake to happen. We've got a round now, potentially. But they don't plant it for Rez. They plant it safe from him. That'll stall things out. Deco's coming looking here in the bank. He's looking to make a deposit. They line up! He knocks him down. Just Rez remains. Only one man. No kit. No time. Three to find, and Norvi will take him on the first. Six all. We'll be back.
Six all at the half. That one was the story of momentum. It was so good for NIP until it so wasn't. And now Aurora. A tied scoreline here. Now on the dominant half have a real chance to put this series away in two. Double long setup. Daco up close. Where are we going, NIP? Looks like mid. Will Deco be able to spring his trap? Ooh. Ooh! No, he will not, is the answer. Nicely done from Alex. Pinked onto the next as well. He's going to lay him low. Good use of the Glock here. Gets himself the dualies. And something's happening. It's Kenzie getting a kill. Traded out. Alex on a tear, this one. On pace, potentially, for the ace. Bomb plant would be very nice. They're actually going to put some time in this. Oh, it's a shame that Lackey's not committed. Rolling back towards B. Okay, we're back live. Go for this door feels like suicide. It is. And it is Lackey. Oh, they had so much control. They had so much space. But into Lackey they go. And Lackey does not miss. Well, we hope. Uh, <laughs> I only assume this is going out to the viewers. The, uh, the choppiness we're getting on last one. Hopefully it's not. Fingers crossed it's not. Guess you're right. In an ideal world, their view is smooth like butter. Yeah. They're connected straight to the main. Full eco. One D on Alex. Chance for Aurora to really settle into this defensive half. Mm. I 
I've got that on. Turn out the deco. Ump user. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you might be getting some kills here. Should be. It's one. <laughs> I reckon that's two kills. Three. Three, actually. Uh, someone spilled molasses on uh, the server, apparently. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, two right, casualties. In some total. Three for Deco. That's a nice money made off the ump. Yeah. We didn't see how it happened, but... <laughs> it's all uh. good. I enjoy... This is like... Okay, so now it's like um, CSI casting, right? We see a few still frames, and we have to recreate the events yeah, based on what we sound, see afterwards. Dude. I'm not used to casting off sound, but... Right. We're even losing the sound a little bit. We're on one of the B players. They've just jumped out of heaven. Something has gone horribly awry here. Ah, uh, there's more tops. <laughs> there's some HEs. Okay. No kills just yet. Some nice HE itch. Another round of Molotovs. I heard a footstep. We might even be losing some sound here. Oh, there's a jump. I think someone just abandoned the boost. I'm gonna guess that was over towards B. Flashbang in. Still info hopping. Get dice player, maybe? No, no, no. That's the T side player. That's an AK. Mm. Oh, 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 okay. Right, okay. Now we've got an update, so... Nobody's dead. We're walking free up long. They'll take toilets, presumably. Where's all gone? Still double toilet setup. Where was Rezal lost? That was short, actually. Okay. Interesting. But all this space out towards long is huge. Now deck on trouble. Blue Phoenix potentially coming his way. Max, sir. Gives up the audio cue and Kenzie punishes. Blue Phoenix, though, put in some work. Opens up the path for his teammates to get out long and they will take full advantage. Still have to worry about Deco. And Deco, well, it's only one. Lackey cleans up the other. Let's see if Lackey can pull off this clutch. 13 seconds. Just needs to deny the bomb plant. Just needs to deny the bomb plant. He's done it. Five, four, seven. Bomb plant. Numbers. 1v1. Lackey and Alex. Dueling for their fates. Like they got lightsabers out here. We're on a lava planet. Creeping in. There's a kit down. Lucky. He's going to stick it. He's going to grab that kit on a route. And he's going to defuse that bomb. But Alex is holding the line. Alex is holding the line. He spotted him now. He somehow dodged the kit. Oh, no. He somehow dodged the kit. Needs to get it. Alex doesn't realize he's off, but Lackey can't find the kit. Now he's got it, but it's too late. Alex wins the round. I'm more impressed you managed to cast half of that. <laughs> it's quite impressive. You know, uh, adapt, overcome. Yeah, bag rules would be proud of that. I'm going to go drink my own. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, I loved that show when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I used to watch it with my dad. But it was also like, it was fun kind of guessing what was staged, if that makes sense, or what was... Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of the, the drinking suspicious liquids. <laughs> mm. He had the one, do you remember the one, with the, one, the one with the tube? That's all I'll say. With the tube? With a tube. I don't think I do. Let's just say your your mouth is not the only way to consume water. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. Yep, sure. Do not try it that. Actually out. Turns out, it's not even a survival technique. Bear Grylls just has a particular um, fascination with making people watch him do that. Look at this, they've just completely avoided the whole long setup. They get to kill in con. It's a double long setup to play anti-flash. And NIP have a safe for free. So they're saying, okay, this is either a B stack or a long setup. Those are the two options. Oh, don't peek the bomb. Don't peek the bomb. Don't peek the bomb. That's the only thing you can do wrong here. It's all good. They get the kill. But just for future reference, folks, if you're running that setup with your team, just drop the bomb if you're going to peek long. 
Just throw it over onto the plant spot. There's no reason to potentially throw that into long into a scout crosshair. There's just no reason. It's also that you knew that Deco and Kenzie were alive, the A players, so... Gotta be somewhere. And... The slideshow returns. Yeah. It's just a save. We're all good on this. Confusing part is Max. Uh, that's an M4 as well. Okay, at least we see the kill. Well, this will have to be a save in the next, I think, for Aurora. Um, Terrorists win. We could force. But it's not going to be pretty. Hmm. Bring a new, whole new meaning to split screen gaming. Yeah, tearing our reality. As we get the screens, Aaron. Do console games still have split screen, I wonder? I feel like that's gotten really out of fashion. Yeah. But I have so many fond memories of being a kid and split screening with my friends or my brother. Like, as, as much as playing on the internet, you know, obviously opens up. Really. But it's only something to be said for actually, you know, doing stuff in person. Yeah, the communal atmosphere. Nothing like having a sleepover with yeah. your buddy's PlayStation and the, the new game and trying to beat through it on co-op. Exactly. We, we should stop playing CS lands with five monitors. It should be one big screen per team. Mm, I don't know about that one, Chief. But I'd like to see well, it tried once. On land. I think in honor of our traditions, every CS land should require that one of their players be duct taped to the ceiling. You know the iconic pick I'm speaking about. I'm not sure I do, actually. Well, I'll show it to you later. This is an incredible round. We have two USPs out, and somehow Aurora are in a 5v2. Uh, yeah, this could change this series. We've been uh, a little out of it, as we haven't really been able to see much of it. But now, look at this. Are NIP already got the thinking flank. save? I think they are, aren't they? Max is I mean... sat in playground. Blue Phoenix is making no no real move, and, and that's because NIP doesn't have amazing money themselves. I would love to see a hunt after time. That would make me feel very warm and gooey inside. Just wait, Deco, just wait. Right, so they clear connector. There you go, Al. There's the iconic um, photo. Keeping all the guns. Oh, he's out of time. Here comes the hunt. Here comes the hunt. What you got, Maxter? Oh, he lives. Everybody lives. I've never seen this picture, you know. You've never seen this no, picture? No, somehow. Yeah, this is an iconic one. There's multiple angles of the two. Hold on, I'll find it for you. They literally didn't... The way it worked is they didn't have enough room. If, if you want to see this photo we're talking about, just Google duct tape ceiling land party. And you'll see what we're talking about. Basically, they didn't have enough room in whatever room they were doing this in for everyone's setups. So they elevated one guy's desk and duct taped him the ceiling to play. I failed to believe that was the easiest solution. <laughs> That's the solution they came up with. Oh, Lord, we're back to the, um, oh, the chop right, fest. Hold on, cast off audio. No, we're back in. Okay, we're right, okay. Um, if we hear AK or Galil sounds, that is good for Nip. Actually, that's a lie. There are two AKs on Aurora. And I was going to say, that's that's just everybody. Okay, um... Three AKs, even. One might say, nice needs. Okay. Blue Phoenix, bring that throw. Oh, no. It's chaos all over the place. Razzalt lines them up, knocks them down. Might get traded. I think it's traded. No. Well, there yes. you go. Aurora won. Deco oh, got a I kill. Result got another. I think he only had... Yeah. 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 It's hard work trying to analyze no. this. <laughs> We're just You'll take it. Here at the end of the round. All right, now if we analyze the star patterns in the background. We're going to do this like a GeoGuessr video. Yeah, uh signage, uh it's uh, Germany, Berlin, Germany. Uh you can tell from the uh wall pattern, the brick brick pattern here. It's like it's like when you do it on uh, the like the you know the, the ones where you can't actually move. We have to just instantly decide. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing here. Okay, right. Um, if we hear pistols, 
I must be nip. Oh, wait, this time we actually get to see the round. Guess he gets the anti kill. Oi! Number stacking up. <laughs> there should be no world round if you won this. My ears just yeah. got blasted. With that one. Okay. Um. <laughs> We're all up to 11. This is the last ditch effort. This is the last hurrah for NIP. Win or bust. What if it comes back to us on cams and we're like, this is well? Uh, then we'll, th we'll throw quickly, Alan. We'll throw quickly. <laughs> we need to bring the bracket up. It's got to be done. At least the bracket can, 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 uh, <laughs> stall out and it's fine. Right. Um, we're back in it. Okay, there's only one AK this time on Aurora, so the AK sounds are quite reliable. Result, might have just got a kill. Yes, he did. Four and four. Trading up. Tons of space outs worth long. There's no one here. It's just going to be Norvi rotating up. He's bringing results along with him. And as they clear out Khan, they're starting to feel more confident. I think it's the utility. I think the utility absolutely breaks us. So if they could just stop throwing nades, if we could collectively agree to stop throwing nades, that'd be chill. Oh, look at this flank. Look at this flank. Kinsey's come all the way around the world. But has he lost the duel? Wrinkle's alive. Somehow both of them are alive. But he's done damage. He's hemmed them in. He's got information as well. The one potential bailout spots through Khan. And, uh, well... Uh, seems like they're committing to the A play right now. There's some footsteps on. Could be a good spot for Norvi if he doesn't get cleared. He's not going to be. Good kill. Follow up as well. Sets this up nicely for his team. Lackey's still here by the truck. They don't know. Bomb denied. Rez alone. All the work to do. He'll have the first the cost of half of his health. Mackenzie now will polish him off. Series point now found for Aurora. They just need one. Almost robotic with that play. <laughs> uh, right. Well, they stumbled a little bit at the start of that first half, but actually since then, it's been pretty good from Aurora. Um... Ancient was cleaner, but starting to come good now. Kenzie's having a great map. And of course, on this map, he's the A player. Pivotal position, lots of opportunity for plays and aggression, and this round is no different. Can I be know he's here? No. They're about to learn. Ooh, the transfer. They're lucky it's not more. I like he's not able to get away. I mean, this might actually be a rifle, but uh, Deco's not going to let them keep on to that. Bomb is now down. You've got an AUG watching it. This is just utter and abject disaster. Lackey, meanwhile, is pushing into spawn to turn up with his teammate. Don't really need to fight this, but sure, why not? Go for it, Deco. Let that freak flag fly. All in the max are now. Four kills to find. All the work in the world to do, and he won't get past the first. 13 to 8, strong showing from Aurora. And this is a dominant 2 0. Aurora now in the grand finals of this qualifier, one series away from a spot at the ESL Challenger Young And how can you doubt them? I mean, if they, they've lost no maps, right? I think during the. Uh... Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the maps have been pretty, pretty good as well. I mean, they've also played. Metasport, Apex, and Zanip are uh, three of the better teams in this qualifier. And of course, whoever survives the onslaught of the lower bracket will be a similar caliber. So yeah, there's uh, no complaints. Result, if Result's going to join and pretty much from day one be one of the best players on this team alongside Deco, of course, they're going to look brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying a lot of what I'm seeing from this team. They are a lot of fun. And I, I really do look at the other teams in this qualifier and question who even has the ceiling to take it to Aurora right now. And... I'm not sure any of them do, gotta be honest. That is the question. And if they don't, then Aurora qualifying into Yonchiping. I mean, watching this team on land is uh, an appetizing prospect. Seeing what uh, what style can transition, uh, you know, what will carry yeah. over. I mean, they're also, they're also a threat beyond groups if they make it. Um, Most definitely.
yeah, I mean, obviously for them as well, Pro League spot, if they make it that far, that is a huge target um, for Aurora. So, yeah, um, they look in great shape now, and uh, we'll wait to see who's going to join them in that grand final, won't we? We will indeed. Let's take a look at the bracket, see what we've got here, because there is still a match going on over on the B stream in the lower bracket. If you get who is going to potentially face them, uh, well, who's definitely going to face an IP. Uh, Metasport Monty. Metasport up in the second map as Monty's claimed the first. Looking like that could be a full series here. 12-10 for Metasport is the latest update. Uh, so go on over to the B stream. Check that one out. But for now, we're going to say adieu, at least until NA tonight. Uh, so that will take place in about two and a half hours. We'll know two hours and ten minutes. So be sure to tune back in for NA. And we'll see you then for now. Bye-bye, everyone. Keep your picture in my room Cause it gets me in the mood You're still a free free in my head You got me so confused My mind is full of you Still want you in my room Don't wanna get rid of you